Howdy, y'all. Yeah, we got 36 souls on board. Uh, some of them are louder than others, but... Uh, <laughs> Truella, let's go. <laughs> and you're gay. <laughs> Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I'm here with the infamous Cal Dunjala. Yeah, baby. Jacob Furman Matera. Oh, buddy. Man, this feels good to have everybody in the same room. Danny Dubs, my God. We're back. Woo. D- didn't What's up to everybody in the chat? Thanks for hanging out. I, I got to be honest. We're like, live, baby, for the world. When each of you weren't here, it felt like my favorite aunt had died. Oh, again? Yeah. Damn it. Damn, that's a lot of times to go through that, Mike. <laughs> I still, f- I, I gotta be, I gotta get this off my chest real quick. Uh, my favorite aunt, my aunt Patsy. Um, I did something very mean before she died. Uh huh. I adopted a bad beagle from the pound, and I left him in her care most of the time because I just started getting pussy from my wife. And a delivery guy came to bring food, and she opened the door, and my dog, my bad beagle, head. Tried running out, and she tried to grab him by the collar, and, and head was so strong that he yanked her out the door. And my aunt Patsy was a big woman. Damn. <laughs> like, and when I got home, and she told as, as she's telling me what's happening, she's crying. Oh no! And I couldn't help but fucking laugh in her face. Jesus Christ! So, and, that was your favorite aunt. And oh, Jake, I forgot you you channel aunt Patsy. Oh, uh, uh, uh. I don't think this guy's channel anything. I just think he's coming in his pants. <laughs> Head hurts. <laughs> Head still hurts. <laughs> Wait, was your dog named after a new metal new metal band member? He was uh, Brian Head Welch from Corn. <laughs> Welcome, chat. I'm so happy to see everybody in here. Man, this makes it so much better with everybody here. <laughs> Am I talking to Jake or Aunt Patsy now? Uh, now it's Jake. Oh, what yeah. the fuck, dude? Um, Where'd oh, she go? Fuck, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Ow. And Patsy, I'm so sorry you got yanked out of the door by my fucking dog. No, I'm, Michael, I you should have just taken him back, fed him to the UPS guy. Wait. And Pat's still in pain? It's 21 years later. She died in 2001. I, I forgot to take an Advil before I went. I'll tell you what. And Patsy's death and her leaving me five Gs really took... A lot of the residual damage off of how I felt about 9-11. Is that how you could afford to... <laughs> Is that how you afforded to put the dog down eventually? <laughs> no. What was, what was Head's fate? Uh, he became uh, ordained I or something. I took him back to the pound. Oh, you I couldn't care for him. Okay. I was getting pussy, so... Yeah. Not proud of it, but... Yeah. You're willing to admit it, and that yeah. makes you a, a big man. But look at, look at my animals now. Spoiled rotten. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they're not allowed to leave the house. Better for everybody. All right, y'all. Y'all ready to get to a stinker? Yeah. Y'all ready for piss? Or an Impractical Jokers episode? Could you imagine if there, time? there was a ring camera for your aunt's incident? Oh, my God. Of her being dragged out by a beagle? That's what I kind of hope heaven's like. You get to see all the ring incidents that weren't <sighs> able to be ringed. <laughs> That's what I would do. Like, you have access to the whole of knowledge. You have the ability to affect the future. I would just be sitting there watching, like, fat bitches fall <laughs> with wings on. <laughs> the fucking robe. All right. Let's do it, baby. Flip that coin, John. Here we go. Fuck you. Oh, we did it, Jake. You won again. I thought there was magic in the air tonight. That was a fart, baby. <laughs> Yep. I taste it now. Might have been a queef, too, from earlier. <laughs> Had a uh, lady back here. Whoa. You're not supposed to have ladies back here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is the no queef zone, bro. You ever had a lady queef for you? Well, I mean, not like uh, on command. Mm-hmm. Not at my request. <laughs> <laughs> you just sit there with an army helmet on. <laughs> 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 we need two queefs now. <laughs> you radio in a queef. <laughs> it's Fubar over here. I need some queefs. <laughs> yeah, I always try to get my wife to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the yeah, that's fun <laughs> if you get it out of it in the moment. Mm-hmm. But you don't want a girl that's just like sitting around after you blew in her and. She lets off some queefs while you're watching Impractical Jokers, you know? Just <laughs> pussy lips quivering like, like fucking Barney from The Simpsons mouth. It's like, damn, it's been 10 minutes. What the fuck's happening down there? All 
All right, I ain't I, been in there for 10 minutes. <laughs> all right, I, I promise you this is a serial killer podcast. <laughs> We're going to get to that right now. All right, boys. Listen, I'm happy to tell you I'm in love again. Oh, whoa. Yep. Two weeks in a row. I'm I'm so I got such a big heart, man. Yeah. <laughs> I got yeah. s- so much love to give, and don't tell my wife about You'd be this. Be Polly in another life. Oh my god, <laughs> Polly want a fat bitch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I love the fat. Uh, last night we had Gardini on Dat Meat, and uh, he loves big ladies too. And he says, uh, "You better be two something if you're trying to do something." <laughs> <laughs> that is, put that on my fucking tombstone, baby. All right, y'all. We got a we got a bad bitch on deck. Does anybody in the chat want to take a guess as to who this bad bitch is? Wow. That's bold. Uh, it is not modern. Okay. She is an older bad bitch. And she's dead now. So in Mike's terms, Please modern her. anything the last hundred years <laughs> is off the table. She would be 170 years old now. So Thank happy birthday in much. heaven. 170? Yeah. Oh, damn. This is, this is some frontier shit. Mm-hmm. This is some pioneer shit. That frontier shit. Mm. <laughs> that Davy Crockett pussy. <laughs> <laughs> that Oregon Trail diet dysentery pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Davy Crockett was the raccoon skin cat, right? Yeah, you Evan, you got it. And Frank, baby. No. Um, <laughs> no, we're going to get the she bell soon. Be that old. No, not Mary it's Todd Lincoln. Anne Boleyn. All right, y'all. In another minute, I'm going to tell y'all in three... <laughs> Two, one. This lovely lady. Y'all want to take a guess? You want to take a guess? Is she American? She is. Who was a bad bitch from America 170 years ago? Jane Toppin. I was going to say China, but Jane Toppin. Nickname Jolly Jane. (coughs) Was she a fat bitch? She was, yeah. She was. You're going to love her, and you're going to understand why I love her. She was a big bitch. She loved drinking beer. Yes. She loved telling dirty stories. She loved telling lies, and she would, would poison her enemies. That's cool. That's everything I love in a lady. You ever just yeah. want to start lying? I like that about somebody. If, they're, if they've been dead for 150 years and their bio is still liar... It's pretty good. Damn, yeah. yeah, they were they making did a lot. fucking tales. Well, yeah. dude, she was uh, she was lying about all kinds of shit. So Jane Toppin would lie about her mother being in the circus, her brother being a Civil War veteran decorated by Abraham Lincoln. Okay. And she eventually got into nursing, and she would tell her colleagues that the Tsar of Russia heard about her nursing skills and was trying to hire her as a private nurse. Pretty good lies. Yes, and that's solid. You couldn't fucking say no to that. Shit. Yep. All right, well, I guess I have no choice but to believe you. Yes, Kirk Gregory, bopping, topping, fat bitch, great smile, though, Ryan. You nailed it, baby. Do these people really know her? You think this is... I'm sure they're looking her up, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I can't believe we didn't get the that person who we've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. All right, so she was born March 31st, 1854, in beautiful Boston, Massachusetts, Ooh, one of my yeah. favorite cities. Love it there. Great city. Yeah. You guys like Boston? I do. I'm a big fan. Clam chowder is my uh, my drink of choice. Dude. So it's really it's really a good place for me to hang. Clam out. chowder, Wahlburgers, racism. <laughs> the big Incredible story. all the way around. Yeah. Have you really been to Wahlburgers before? I hated it. Yeah. I uh, didn't hate it. It was just like, all right, this is what Wahlburgers is. It's like this a Northern second Liberties tier in Shake Shack. Yeah, I, I did. I went to the one in Northern Liberties in Philly when it was there. Okay. I went there, yeah. And I saw a guy sitting right outside the window shooting heroin while I was with there with my kids. That's the neighborhood. Yeah. Damn. And right across the street, a different time, I saw a man leaning up against a wall taking a shit. Was it? Were you inside of a win- window and you could see his asshole? No, I was outside. Okay. So you could only see his front and then the shit falling between his legs. I could, yeah. Not coming out of his. Yeah. Head. One time as a kid, I, I, me and my friends watched a dog take a shit. And the owner of the dog was, like, really mad at us. She was like, what, you never seen a dog? And I had never seen a dog take a shit before, so I was like, this is crazy. I didn't know yeah. how well, well, you the know, sausage I said, was made. Dog, that's why I, I <laughs> firmly it believe. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> it was my Aunt Pat that was yelling at him. <laughs> There's a lot to watching a person take a shit. That's why I used to watch my boy Bobby. Well, in addition to having severe betrayal issues. 
But if you have the opportunity to watch a life form shit, watch it. You got to take that opportunity. Yeah. You only get one shot. There's a t-shirt right there. Car- <laughs> Carpe BM. <laughs> 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 so alan wishard we're talking about jane toppin um 1854 in boston man what a time to be in boston there was a lot of anti-irish sentiment then i bet they all hated the That's fucking crazy. celtics That's imagine that they took it over yeah dude yeah. and it was funny because all right let me back up a little bit so her parents were named peter and bridget bridget Died when the kids were very young, so there were three siblings. It okay. was Jane Toppin, whose original name was Honora Kelly. She changed it herself? No, uh, the lady who took her in changed it okay. because anti-Irish sentiment was so bad. Gotcha. Wow. And plus, she hated the Irish as well. Dude, this lady who took her in hated the Irish so much that she told Jane and anybody who asked that she was Italian. Jesus. Wow. Man, how things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, uh, her mom, Bridget, died of tuberculosis when uh, Nora, Bridget, and their other sibling, Nellie, who later went on to become a rapper who wore a Band-Aid under his eye. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Let me stop. Let me stop playing. <laughs> but the mom died of tuberculosis, and the dad was an alcoholic who was batshit insane who would beat all three fucking kids. The kids would walk around in raggedy-ass clothing and walk around with visible fucking bruises on them. Eventually, thankfully, he got to a point where he felt as though he couldn't care for them anymore, so he dropped them off at an orphanage called the Boston Female Asylum. I know it. Which is now a children's operated Wahlburgers. He's not allowed within three <laughs> blocks of it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this hasn't been substantiated, but I've seen this mentioned a lot in my research about Jane Toppin, but apparently her crazy-ass alcoholic father worked for a tailor and what got him ultimately, um, what do they call it when you get sent to an asylum? Committed. Institutional committed. Lines. Institutionalized to an asylum was while he was on the clock as a tailor, he sewed his own eyelids shut. Get out of here. Jiminy Crickets. Anything to get out of doing work. <laughs> but I wonder how good of a job he did. <laughs> that is a pretty good hem. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever have to get shit hem when you were a kid? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I got them hemmed way too high. I had floods after the fact. Yeah, same, man. Really, pa- It was painful. I, I, I choose not to relive it. Dog, my shit was painful all the time. My mom had You're this weird charge. thing. You're in charge. You got to tell her, Taylor, what you want. One, one inch break on your suit pants? You tell him that. Oh, okay. I just thought. You're in charge. I didn't know that. You I would have. cuffed up? Hey, let me get a cuff with no break. I would have taken every old Italian's word for it. Um, No, couldn't be worse. <laughs> <laughs> they. <laughs> They know what you're talking about okay. when you say shit. Yeah. But if you leave them to their own devices, you're going to look like a fucking idiot. So if I go in there to a tailor, I want to set the tone. And as soon as he gets down there with the with the measuring stick, you want to smack him across the head, right? Yeah. Let, let one loose a little bit, you know? <laughs> Have a razor in your pocket. Just your drop your meat on his head. <laughs> Sprinkle pubes all over his hair. <laughs> Salt bait. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this motherfucker uh, had reportedly... Sewn his own eyelid shut. That's some fucking Joker shit right there, dude. Was he a twisted Joker? He sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. Want to know how I got these scars? (laughs) Want to know how I got these husky pants? (laughs) I'm guessing a fat child came in. (laughs) All right, so the kids are in Boston Female Asylum. And I don't know that it was a very fucked up place other than what they what would happen with the kids once they turned 10 years old. So the kids would go there from the ages of 3 to 10. And when you turn 10, you were basically taken in by a local family. Okay. And I think they were just trying to unload you to whoever would take you. So when Jane became 10 years old, she got taken in by a lady named Ann C. Toppin, who lived in Lowell, Massachusetts. And um, once you went to one of these families from the ages of 10 to 18, you became their indentured servant. Oh, okay. That sucks. Yeah. I was going to say, it sounds too good to be true. <laughs> it was not. Oh, one other thing I want to add. Any fucking kid was basically the same fucking thing back then. What, a servant? Yeah. Like, you are they They have six kids so they can fucking help them rebuild the house after it floods or whatever bullshit. In addition to uh, the little boy that you took a liking to, the rosy cheek cum dumpster that Carl Panzram took a liking to. I don't think I've ever said that. Uh, I can... 
Danny, can you pull that up right now? Danny, if there is footage of that, destroy it, please. Yeah, does anybody else remember John making fun of the little boy that was a Roji Cheek cum dumpster, according to John? I don't think Mike's telling the truth on this one. Jake, do you remember that? I, I think I, I vaguely remember this. I know, hey, Pat, do you remember this? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, she oh. Head All right, Patsy, take some fucking <laughs> Advil <laughs> for fuck's sake, man. Yo, let's feed Jake twenty Advil. Stop. <laughs> and Pat, are you okay with that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, head's probably in heaven now too. And Pat, can you tell me if head's in heaven right now? He keeps barking at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> He's there, yes. All right, I'm glad he made it up there. <laughs> I'm so uh, good at improv. And Pat, are there any of my other dead loved ones that did not make it to heaven? Uh, you'll see. <laughs> yeah, but the chip like is here. Across the board, <laughs> nobody remembers me saying that, so. Uh, I'm going to have to re refresh your guys' memory. <laughs> All it says is, I remember, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had to leave the gym because I said it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, it's like these you guys the are all Alamo. liars. All right, so her, her loyal followers, <laughs> doing whatever you tell them. Her younger sister, a girl named Delia, uh, she went somewhere else, and there isn't much on her. Word seems to be that she went nuts, too, and also may have become a prostitute. Okay. So Soda pussy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how they establish paternity. Your pussy and asshole are so shy. <laughs> All right, so um, and Toppin had a little girl named Elizabeth who became fucking Jane's foster sister. Mm -hmm. By all accounts, Elizabeth treated her well as a foster sister. So much so that when Anne's indentured servitude was finished when she was 18, she was given 50 bucks. And could go and do anything she want, but Elizabeth took her in as her servant. Okay, so yeah, it seems like it's not a real hardship of a life if you are being a servant, you know what I mean? You get a place to stay. Is he going to fight me? I thought so. <laughs> I, was getting, I was getting nervous. Um, I was like, this is it. He's snapping. All right, and then servitude sucks. What do you got against foster kids? <laughs> no, but... Uh, this lady does seem like a very nice person And she was just trying to do her a solid Because she was a kid that came from a fucked up background And, and was actually mistreated Pretty often by Ann Toppin She would make fun of her for being overweight She would tell her she wasn't going to be shit She would call her Nasty ass Fucking Going on the poisoning ass bitch I'll bet you're going to sew that pussy shut Damn Your daddy sewed his eyelids shut so he wouldn't have to look at your ass Motherfucker like that kind of stuff. Yeah, pretty rude stuff. I think I got, I got to pick out one person in my life and treat them like that. <laughs> out of all the people in this room, who would you go with? Oh, come on. Come on, Mike. That's a, They're leading the witness. I'm not leading shit. The problem is, it would be little Hasbell over here. <laughs> don't, don't, you, don't you dare pick on him. <laughs> if you could, though, Hasbell is an adult, so I don't feel any reservations in saying this. If you could just grab him by the ears and just fuck him silly, would you do it? With my penis? Yeah. In his he mouth or asshole? His asshole. Well, yeah, if you're holding his ears. But how are you going to fuck his asshole? The Dumbo? <laughs> I could do both. Yeah. yeah. Believe you, in yourself, Jake. You've never Jesus seen a painting Christ. of Santa holding the reins? <laughs> no, I haven't. I don't know what All the right, fuck well. that's got to do with <laughs> the key and chain. Um, Uncle Beef, I'd go with Furman, too. Damn it. Yeah, uh, even though I love and respect Hasbro, I would use him as a little, a little <laughs> fuck toy. It's kind of like when you get like a Nerf Howler, you want to see how far you can throw it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when, when you meet a man this size, like you want to see how hard you can I fucking pound see if his I can cheeks. I feel my dickhead in his belly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. What would you do if you could? Poke it through like alien. Yeah, <laughs> that would make me even hotter. You think you'd laugh or be like, yeah, that's what I thought. I'd be like, I'm all up in your guts, Hasbula. I wouldn't be <laughs> laughing at all. I don't fucking play around when I'm linking love, dude. <laughs> He'd be your rosy cheek condom. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. <laughs> Finally. One-way ticket to Russia, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, she's getting thick right now. And I think it's she's probably overeating because she's getting browbeaten constantly. Yeah. So... 
I know the feeling. Like when when you get depressed, like you just want to fucking eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. And then, unfortunately, thick women were not popular back then. Huh. I feel like she was. She just missed it. You know, like all those paintings of fat bitches yeah, like in the 2015 when when fat bitches got popular. She was yeah. a little too early, a little too late. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. She could have been around for Lizzo. Mm. That bitch would be getting her fucking elbow fat fucked. <laughs> She'd be getting the back of her knees <laughs> fucked, dude. You didn't know you could get so many guys off with all them folds. Would you feel any reservations talking to a, a big lady like that? Be like, uh, let me put it everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> let me put it in your ankle. <laughs> no. I mean, I'd probably be paying for it, so. Oh, man. Just spent five hundred dollars at a fucking Sizzler. How's that even possible? <laughs> I'm putting this wherever I want. <laughs> and I had a Groupon. <laughs> <laughs> you can use Weight Watcher points for this cum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me stop playing, y'all. Now, um, Elizabeth. Wait, before I, I announce this, um, it seems as though at one point Jane might have fallen in love and been engaged to get married that's yeah. nice however if this is true she was also left at the altar Ooh. damn dude that's a bummer dude she was all set to get those knees fucked here comes the bride hmm? all fat and wide <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all remember that shit. <laughs> that Do y'all remember that shit? Banger. <laughs> Street banger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, she gets left at the altar, and at that point, I think she says, "Fuck it, I'm just going out killing." She does say at one point, after "Right then, she, that's the impetus." Well, after she gets caught, she says, "My objective." I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. My objective was to kill more men and women than any other killer had ever killed before. Oh, shit, she really fucking swished a flip. And she always said, there was one point where um, she's like, um, all right, if I had been a married woman, I probably would not have killed all those people. I'd have my husband, my children, and my home to make up my mind, or to take up my mind. I believe her. Damn. I have no choice but to believe her. Mm-hmm. Sounds really baby crazy. <laughs> Really baby crazy. Jake, you ever had baby fever? Buddy, whew. every day. Every day I see a little baby and I just, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> little come out and I'm just like, ah, oh, I need to see another one. Brother, I had to be taken out of the theater when I went to go see Boss Baby in handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad I had baby fever. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's jerking over here. <laughs> <sighs> And dude, unfortunately, while she's living with her foster sister, Elizabeth, Elizabeth falls in love. Ooh. And, uh, and Elizabeth's all right looking. Kinda, I didn't see any pictures of her. Tight. I imagine. Yeah. I mean, relatively, probably. She's still a little bit soft, but yeah, she's not a fucking hard body. Jake, John, how do you know that? There was no fucking hard bodies back then. There's no... No bitches fucking laying bricks, dude. I don't know, man. They were eating Parent- clam chowder and bread bowls, and they were soft in the middle. I don't know, brother. You, you never heard of the Just Salem? Like <laughs> you never heard of the Salem bad bitch trials? <laughs> <laughs> they were there, man. Wait, how long after that? That was 1700s, right? So that was at least. This is oh, no, the mid 19th like century. 1500s. When yeah. were the Salem witch trials? I don't yeah. fucking know, dude. If you're in the chat, fucking look it up for me. <laughs> <laughs> Salem Witch Trials were, I think, 1600s. 1644 to 1689. I got my identity stolen in Salem once. What? I went there in, I believe it was 2004, maybe. When an old Domino's manager t- try to suck your dick up there? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I went there. Um, I got a gig at a Chinese restaurant. It wasn't in Salem. However, we went to Salem just because it was a cool yeah. place. And the first bar we went to was a Dominican bar and you go in and the entire wall on one side of this Dominican bar is a mural dedicated to Pedro Martinez, the pitcher. You go in there, the password is your social security <laughs> number. <laughs> it wasn't even a Dominican bar, it was just one Dominican guy in there. <laughs> we went in there, it was uh, my boy Steve and I and then who the fuck else went? Oh, Eric Todd. Had they just won that year? They the did, year yeah, yeah, they did, yeah. So 2004, yeah. Nice. 
So we went in there, and they're like, all right, let's see some IDs. We're the, we're the only fucking white boys in there. So we hand over our IDs, and they're ho- holding onto them for like a fucking hour. <laughs> then eventually it's just like, they come back like, it, it felt like fucking forever. And they're finally like, all right, what do you want? Or like, all right, I guess we'll order a fucking El Presidente so we don't get fucking knifed. So there's definitely a Dominican <laughs> Mike Rainey walking around <laughs> New England right now. If Salem's known for two things, it's witch trials and Dominican bars. <laughs> <laughs> 1692 to 93. Oh, that was short-lived. They didn't kill that many bitches. Ah, oh, Phillies were good I, that year. They went, <laughs> they went nuts in that time. Yeah, they really did. A, six million witches. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that's a reference to. I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> was that the Halloween cost? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, New England also has a very nice Halloween cost <laughs> memorial. <laughs> How's he, how's he wearing a sweatshirt and long pants? Don't I'm, address it. I'm burning up. <laughs> He's all riled up because he just came back from New England. Yeah. I mean, I got stains all over my shirt. You don't want to see. Stop. You're wearing the Stop. same shirt you were wearing all weekend? No, but this is a new shirt from today. It's just. It's a new shirt from today and it's yes. already ruined. Let's see oh, it. I have, a ch- I have a baby, dude. It just throws oh, up yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's see that shirt, baby. No. Nah, what do you got? Nah. What does it say? Something racist? <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, no, I'm not gonna do it. It's so. What back to Jane? Yeah, Thomas. okay. So <laughs> back to Pedro Martinez. <laughs> 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 All right. So Jane Toppin's sister Elizabeth <laughs> falls in love, and she gets engaged to be married to a gentleman by the name of Oramel Brigham. It's a made-up name. It's Jake, a popcorn John, guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, popcorn. It's uh, it's horrible sister fucker. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got a husband now. So she's she's living with them. And at this point, it's 1885. She's 31. She's like, all right, I can't stay in this fucking situation forever. She's like, I need to do something for myself. I'm a bad bitch. I don't need no man. Nice. I need my own house. I need my own car. Two jobs. Bad broad. You a bad broad. I think that's how the song goes. I don't think that's a song. It is. It's yeah. Lil Webby. Independent. Who's Lil Webby? Independent. I N D E P E N D E N T. What you know about me? Independent. That's the bad bitch anthem. Lil Webby. Lil Webby. Independent. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have Lil Debbie. I, never, uh, I won't. Oh, I love Lil Debbie too. Rhyming, uh, That's name. a bad bitch. Yes. Lil Debbie. Yeah, Lil she is. Oh, she's. So 1885. She's 31. She's like, all right, I'm a bad bitch. I gotta do something for myself. What do you think? A Monumentally mean bad bitch does for a career. Goes to work at the rat poison factory. Nope. Oh. Jake, the meanest bitch you know, what does she do for a living? I, I don't know them, but I know of them. They're a trash woman. What? Yeah. I like that. Sanitation department. Yeah. Be a bad bitch. I've seen some bad bitches in my neighborhood collecting trash. What? I didn't work never seen a lady though. trash lady. Yeah. Um, yeah, I saw two of them. They might have a whole crew. Might be a thing that they rap about the dumpster <laughs> bitches <laughs> the dumpsters <laughs> dumpster. yeah, mine's a whole crew it's of ladies crew. yeah wow Must be the same whoop, yeah, probably whoop. Yeah. bad bitch alert <laughs> damn go ahead girl uh i imagine she's swinging something are there still blacksmiths at this time Ooh. she goes to nursing school okay, okay. yeah yeah so she goes to nursing school at a place called Cambridge Hospital, and there she gains the nickname Jolly Jane. By and large, the patient, patients love her, but the staff at Cambridge Hospital quickly learn to hate her. Why? Because she's a big-time gossip. Um, I think they can tell by the way she interacts with patients that she's probably into some fucked-up shit. One thing that really raises a lot of alarms is she gets very into autopsies. Okay, yeah, that's a little <laughs> sus. <laughs> But she hasn't done anything uh, illegal yet, right? I can't say that because this is probably the place where she got into poisoning people. All right. She's around death, medicine, poison, that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. This is kind of where she starts to transform. Yes, and there's a lot of opportunities for this shit because nurses back then, in addition to typical nurse duties, they also had to cook and they had to clean for patients. Damn. So they were fucking busting it around the clock. They were busting it open, dog. 
And the way that she would poison people was that she would hook them up with a combination of morphine and something called atropine, which would counteract the morphine. It was also a painkiller, but it was used primarily as a poison antidote. Okay. okay. So she would fuck them up with the morphine, and then she would bring them back out with the atropine. And would they feel pain in the, before they died, or was it like a... Dude, there was one lady... As high as you can get, and then you're dead. Well, there was a lady named Amelia Finney, who was a patient of hers, who claimed that she fucked her up, and then when she fucked her up with this shit, she got into bed with her. And that became a thing. But she survived, to tell the tale. She did, yeah. So, apparently, fucking uh, Jane Toppin had something called erotophonophilia. What's that? It's something that you have, Jake. It's sexual satisfaction from people dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that thing that you're always talking about yeah, when we're yeah. off air. Well, whenever we're, the mics are off, I do kind of talk about that too much. So, her thing was, like, and this lady in particular, um, she would juice them up with fucking morphine and atropine, and as they were, like, in and out of consciousness... Um, she would molest them. She Men would, and women. Yes, she would be kissing on them. She would be touching on privates. So, dog, a fucking fat bitch who loves drinking, who loves telling dirty stories, who loves giving people opiates and then jerking them off. This might be my favorite lady. Yeah. I get knocked out. What I get up again? <laughs> yeah, that's the one I would, yeah. Yeah, I would finally pull that engagement ring out of my asshole that I've been keeping <laughs> for the right moment. I would be laying there, just be like, "Babe, look at my dick hole. <laughs> look at it, or in look it? in it. That's where the engagement ring would be. Gotcha. I would put it in my dick hole for her, because you know now she's going to catheterize it. you. You know mm-hmm. about catheterization. I do. Well, never been conscious for it, but mm. I know they'd be sticking shit up my dick every once in a while. <laughs> And my one boy had to hold it. <laughs> Jake, have you ever been catheterized? No, but I, I joke that I should have one all the time. Because mm-hmm. I pee a lot. Mm. As you know. I do, baby. But, that, you know, I'm I'm sober now. Well, dog, you got... Yeah. How many ounces of cup do you have in front of you? Probably 90 ounces. Why are you drinking so much? Listen, when you're pre-diabetic, you're thirstier. Oh. You gotta Pre- stay hydrated. Yeah, that's it's right. It's important. This is just coffee. Don't... Tell him to stop hydrating. Thank well, you. coffee's not hydrating. That is true. I would start getting in the other bottle. All right, I get into the other bottle. That's gin. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, she gets in trouble while she's working at Cambridge Hospital, uh, in part because of the fucking autopsy shit, and then also because she's caught falsifying records. Uh, she's always uh, she poisons patients so that they stay longer, because she just likes fucking with them and seeing how far she can manipulate them yeah. before they actually fucking croak. So this is probably the place where she either directly or indirectly starts killing people. But the getting in bed thing is probably one of the creepier aspects <clears throat> of all this. Real quick, why didn't she, like, like seriously, why didn't she just involve, like, throw a priest in the mix and, like, just get married to each one of these people right before they were, you know what I mean? Because that's the thing she wanted, right, was to be married. Get married to a patient? Yeah. I think she wants the... Um, the whole rigmarole, man. Yeah, she oh, wants yeah. them to be alive. Yeah. The only reason she was going to not kill people is if she had a, a a home to take care of with the husband and family. Would she molest them if they w- were wed? Like if they I don't had... think she discriminated, baby. Yeah. Okay. Equal opportunity. Mm-hmm. Cheating ass pieces of shit. She actually had one of those buttons on her uh, white lab coat that said "ask gas or, cra- or cash, nobody rides for free." <laughs> so I don't think she would have cared, Jake. Okay. All right. But yeah, in 1887, she fucks with that lady Amelia Finney, who. At the time, thinks she's just hallucinating because she went in to have an ulcer on, I believe, her ovary operated on. And she thought she was hallucinating everything. But then when she read about fucking Jane Toppin coming yeah. out and busting all these people down, she's like, oh, yeah, this bitch definitely poisoned me. Yeah. You guys ever, so I didn't, I've never like laid next to someone who's, who was dying. Um, uh, but have you ever been visiting someone in the hospital and you like sit on something important? And like, well, like alarms the start going off. Yeah. You pinch their IV. Yeah. Like Jay, I, like, I got like something important for you to sit on. Kind of like You're talking about like Leslie Nielsen in every movie. That he's ever <laughs> yeah. <done>. Folding OJ <laughs> in half. Yes, but I <laughs> that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. I love doing that. Yeah. I go to the hospital just when nobody's even in there that I know. And I just, oh, man, you guys ever sit on anything important? Tubes. Jake, what an insane question. 
<laughs> it's not an insane question. You, you boys ever you shit ever, on anything important? You ever buy a case of whoopee cushions, take them to the hospital, <laughs> make fart noises for the dying people? That would be funny to like pretend your mom mom's dead and like put one under her gown on her chest, and as soon as they start doing CPR, <laughs> you just what the fucking whoopee cushions popping off. That's a joke you could play with your dying grandma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, forget Pull it. Pull the cord out so the fucking the code blue goes off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. The baseball. K. Gregory. Oh, it yeah. is the baseball scene. What's that's that? What you just described. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just sitting on yeah. important shit. Is it? Yeah, that's happened. You ever make up a game that's a hybrid of two other games with your buddies <laughs> because all the guys wearing khakis at the party are getting the chicks? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say, for instance, it was baseball and basketball, and you combined them to make a basketball. You ever do something like that with your pals? Uh. Yeah. Jake, I still want to a hot dog. <laughs> I still want to see that t-shirt. That, see that t-shirt because it's... I have a feeling you're wearing a half top. <laughs> <laughs> like a football player under uh-huh. the pads. Oh uh-huh. yeah. Oh. Yeah, you will have to reveal this before the end of the episode. Okay. <laughs> Let's put up uh, Jake's Venmo, and if he gets <laughs> there by the end of the episode. All right. So 1889 rolls along. So she gets booted from fucking Cambridge Hospital. Eventually, okay. they have enough of her. They're like, all right, enough of this shit. 1889, she goes to Massachusetts General Hospital. Do you know how her grades were when she was there? She was progressing. Okay. So when she gets to Massachusetts General, um, she starts her old bullshit again. She starts uh, fucking getting reckless with the opiates. And then what really fucks her, it's the same kind of behavior which makes people hate her at Cambridge Hospital, which is talking shit about other, yeah, talking shit about other employees. Yeah. So there's one day where she leaves the floor without telling anybody and some of her hating ass coworkers recognize this. So they go to her supervisor like, yo, fucking Jane just left and she didn't tell anybody where she was going. That's enough to get her booted. So she goes back to Cambridge Hospital to try to finish um, her nursing program. Eventually, they're like, all right, now this isn't going to work out. So at that point, she becomes a private nurse. And this is where the murder is going to really kick in the high gear. She becomes a private nurse for a uh, couple named Israel and Lovey Dunham, oh, which damn. I'm not convinced aren't two Jeff Dunham puppets. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know how this bitch love pulling strings. Let me guess. They had a son named Walter. <laughs> wow, that was great. Look at that face. Do it again. Whoa! <laughs> Can you do the Muslim one? <laughs> Slowly pull the sides of my eyes back. I can try. <laughs> <laughs> so this couple, they're in their eighties, and um, she lives with them. So they're her landlord, and she has a thing for fucking landlords. Now, yeah. rumor has it that the guy who left her. Ended up uh, with the daughter of his landlord. So I wonder if this is kind of stuck in her crawl. Because she ends up killing multiple landlords. But, again, I get it just on its own merit. Wait, the guy who left her left her for a daughter of a landlord? That's yeah, of his landlord. Okay. I got confused there. Sorry. In May of 1895, she poisons Israel. And when she gets caught, when she talks about it, she admits to the murder. She's mm-hmm. like, they're like, yo, why did you kill this old man? He's like, she's like, he was feeble and fussy. Damn. <laughs> the bitch was blunt. And he had a fat bussy. <laughs> <laughs> if she was killing landlords today, every hipster in Brooklyn would be like, yes, queen. Oh, I would love it, man. Kill the rich. I love when the worst shit happens to landlords. <laughs> yeah. That gets, that gets my Irish up, man. What if they're a good landlord? There's there's probably a couple out there. Yeah. Let me know when you find them. I know a couple landlords. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Are they nice people? They're just landlords of one property. Okay. Those are the ones that I think are decent people. Yeah. I when you get into you multiple get, properties, yeah. you get into the real cocksuckers. Uh-huh. I can see that. I had one. I came very close to like doing something to this lady's house. Cause my wife was pregnant, and our central air had broken. So I messaged this lady saying, hey, can you have somebody come out to check the air? It's hot as shit. My wife's fucking six months pregnant at the time. She's like, uh, yeah, I'll, look, I'll check on it. Fucking days go by, a couple weeks go by, and we're getting into the summer now. I'm like, look, it's fucking hot as shit. My wife's pregnant. Can you do something? And in her email, she said, look, you're physically uncomfortable, and I'm financially uncomfortable. 
Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, let's switch places then. <laughs> so, landlords, if you're watching, anytime you send an email like that, recognize how close you are to getting a brick thrown through your front window. Yeah. So, oh, fuck your shit up little PSA. Something like that. Whew. I wish I did that. I, in hindsight, I should have. That would have been so hot if my wife came to see me in prison while she was still pregnant. She could have done, we could have done window love with the bellies. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, so she eventually kills uh, Lovey, too, which is like a year and a half later. No, a little over two years later. She kills the wife, too. She had moved in with Lovey, so she kills the husband and the wife, and then she's like, fuck it, I need a vacation. So she calls up her sister, Elizabeth, and while on vacation, she poisons her sister, Elizabeth, with strychnine. Now we're getting into some real poisons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Poisons Elizabeth. She kills her. The sister. Yeah, she kills her sister. Damn. So she calls her brother-in-law, brother-in-law Oromel, up. She's like, yo, you need to come get this bitch. This bitch is dead. So he comes up, and by the time he gets there, she's not in good shape, and she does die while he's there. Who? Jane? No, fucking oh. Elizabeth dies, sorry, like, while the husband's there. Okay, sorry. And this was very nice, too. No, this is actually really fucked up. <laughs> she ends up stealing the victim's watch and like a gold chain that belonged to her to the sister yeah and she tells the brother-in-law she's like your sister wanted me to have this and Ormo was like damn she was a kind soul I know like she did want you to have that yeah because she was so nice to her she was very kind right yeah but after she gets caught Ormo quickly finds out that he's, he finds a receipt in Jane's shit which shows that she had taken the pocket watch and the gold chain or whatever the fuck it was to a pawn shop and it Damn. got money for it. That's a common theme here, too. As she gets further and further into these fucked up murders, she's also a stealing ass bitch, too. Yeah. Which I do find kind of attractive. Yeah. yeah we, we already had an image up of her. That's it. I can't see it very well. But I imagine it's a pretty gross looking woman that you're in love with. John, you. Jake, do me a favor. Sock him in his face. Paula Bunyan ass looking ass bitch. John, shut up. Oh, no, Jake. I just ah. kissed him last week. No, Aunt Pat, stop. Ah. Shut up, Aunt Pat, no. Ah. Sick the dog on him. Sick head on him. Ah. <laughs> no, you're not the dog. You're oh. Aunt Pat. What a weird, <laughs> what a weird thing. To Actually, yeah, you are the dog. Ah. Fucking bite his ass. Ah. <laughs> what a weird thing to ah. yell in the park. Sick head, sick head. <laughs> <laughs> December 1899 rolls along, so she finds another lady to fucking... Um, to uh, victimize And this comes at the recommendation Of a doctor that she used to work with So she's getting hired at these places As a private nurse She gets hired to work with, To go chill with this lady Named Mary McClear Who's a 70 year old woman Who just needs a nurse full time So the doctor wasn't recommending her To kill her she was, He was just yeah. asking, okay, okay, Just Because right. that's what I thought For a second I was like damn This yeah. is, goes all the way to the top Take two of these And I'll see you in the afterlife <laughs> So she poisons her, kills her. February 1900, she gets another victim, uh, a woman by the name of Myra Connors. So she's really fucking tearing through people at this point. Okay. Uh, Myra Connors, well, like one funny thing about this situation is that um, she's a friend of hers who has a position at a place called the Theological School. She's a dining matron, so she's looking for a change in career. Mm -hmm. She wants this job as dining matron, so she kills her own friend Myra, who has this position. What a go-getter. I know, yeah. She kills her, then goes to Myra's boss to say that, look, she went on sabbatical unexpectedly. She told me all about the job. I know it has to be done. I know I could do a great job doing wow. this. So the boss is like, all right, I guess give it a shot. Yeah, easier than putting an ad in the paper. Yeah. So she hires her and quickly falls out of fa favor because she's stealing money and she's just doing a very bad job. That's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> I can really respect that. Yeah. yeah. I love, I love anybody who confidently pitches themselves and just eats shit oh, at yeah. a job. Mike, you've described me at almost every job I've had, buddy. <laughs> uh, before I forget, what what is she doing with the bodies? How's she... Leaving them. like they're In their own home, so it looks yeah, like they yeah, yeah. natural. And they're all old people, so nobody's going to really question this shit. Yeah, and she's not discriminatory. Whoever she has the chance to care for, she's willing to kill. She's going to fuck them up. Now, most of the time, almost every time, she's killing somebody that she knows. Mm-hmm. I think there was only one time where she killed somebody that she really had no relation to. That's wild that she knew all these people. Mm -hmm. This lady was a real gal about town, huh? She's Jolly Jane, baby. Yeah. So she knew all these people. Like She had some kind of relationship. That's nuts. Yeah. 
So you know, what, uh, Mike John, I saw a quote the other day. A little motivational thing for you guys. Wang dang sweet poon tang. <laughs> it's like that, similar to that. Okay, hit me with it. But it's basically, you know, sometimes the people who are your friends will be rooting against you, and complete strangers are rooting for you. It do be like that. It do be like that sometimes. I got to be honest. I have more support from people that I've just met through fucking podcasting that are many of them are in the chat right now yeah. than I do from family. No, yeah, but yeah. I'd, I'd rather have support from strangers. Than my <laughs> I would like both, but yeah. nah. if I can only get one, I'll fucking take it. So yeah. thank you to everybody who has supported me. Thank you, guys. Thank you, strangers, specifically, if you know me in the chat. Yeah, I want to thank all the Not strangers who have mailed me knives as well. I really <laughs> appreciate them. But it's crazy. You know, when you have somebody in your life who's rooting against you, you don't even know it, and they're right next to you. Yeah. <laughs> I want to give Katie a shout-out in the chat because she mentions that fat-smoking nurse is the best. That is a strong nurse. Fat-smoking nurse? And is she nurse? saying that those ladies kind of look like me? <laughs> 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 Hey, I don't get it. Katie! <laughs> <laughs> you kind of look like a fat smoking nurse. John, let your hair down. Let us see. I'm starting to think their name's not really Katie. John, can you let your hair down so we can see how much of a fat smoking nurse you would be? No, it's yeah, too hot. Let it down. It's too hot. Stop it, it. You're too hot. You need to relax and let that hair down. No, it'll curl up. It'll get all... Actually, no, that, it. that hair is perfect for this era of fat nurse. Dude, yeah, 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 this is like... Probably the haircut that fat bitch had killing people. Damn, <laughs> you would actually be a very hot fat nurse. In That's that fat era. nurse, uh, and I'm fat hospital administrator. She's referring. She's got the same uh, oh. same French Revolution haircut. Oh, that bitch looks like John? me, dude. Whoa! Fucking hey, throw, a, throw a blonde mustache on that bitch. We got a <laughs> dead ringer. <laughs> Can you put a tie dye shirt on her real quick? <laughs> or some a ACG gear? <laughs> yeah. The ungrateful dead. <laughs> Damn, John, you look like this bitch. Is that? I think Damn. that's what she was saying. Katie, great call. I, I I did not put two and two together. And yes, she likes spunkers too. So, in another life. Oh, wow. Isn't it fucked up? Like when you read about somebody dead, and you'd be like, "Damn, we would have made an excellent husband and wife." Mm -hmm. I never read anything to th have that thought. No. <laughs> no. So just agree with him sometimes. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Not and smile. He's got a lot of shit to get through. Do you think my <laughs> you think my wife would mind if I started doing that? If I was like, "Yo, babe, I went and visited a grave today, and um, I really think we would have been good together <laughs> had I been born in the 1600s." That is a type of emotional cheating, I believe. What? Yeah. No. So, I mean, if, you're, if she was being a real stickler for the rules, the, but she seems cool. That's the premise for the movie Vertigo. I'm going to defer to the chat right here. Chat, do you think it's cheating if you tell your spouse that you went to the cemetery and? Rubbed your meat on another lady's I headstone. You, I thought you were gonna fart in my face. I was like, "This is not." I wish a motherfucker would. Because I don't, I don't believe it is cheating. Furman, would you ever do that? Uh, no, not. I wouldn't admit to it. Now I love. I know how much you love your big titty queens. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying if if I saw someone. With ragers, uh, that's what I call them. I call them ragers. ragers? You I call, call them big titties ragers. I call, I call them ragers. Yeah. Do you know titties don't get hard, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> Do ragers get hard? What the hell? What the hell? That's why they call boners ragers. Oh God, no! I don't mean like boner ragers. They're, oh shit! You mean tit boners? Tit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's what you mean. <laughs> Can we please cut this? What the fuck is this guy Everyone talking about? I, like, I wish we could do that, Jake. Uh, you know, you're bringing up an interesting point. Uh, Are you wearing it. a trash bag under there? Are you going? You getting dehydrated, brother? <laughs> yeah. Let me take some, some sip of water here. Uh, <laughs> You've been drinking hot coffee this whole time. Rangers, <laughs> the fuck? Do me a favor. Text my wife. Uh, <laughs> say, do I ever make your titties hard? <laughs> hey Siri. <laughs> oh man, remember that call in L.A. with Mike? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now please elaborate because. <laughs> Mike texted a friend, uh, a friend Luke. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, we were filming some stuff. He was helping Danny Dubs with his sound, and he had to take off. We were all going to meet to grab a drink, and uh, he's like, "Hey, my kid's sick. I'm just going to go home." And Mike tries to uh, Siri message him 
Uh, it was like Mr. Bean <laughs> trying to make coffee. <laughs> it was burning everything all at once. <laughs> and uh, I have to imagine he never responded to that. <laughs> I will let you know. I don't it think did he not, did. It did not sound good. He definitely didn't show up again. I think no. he was supposed yeah. to help the whole weekend. Yeah, and he wouldn't even respond. I uh, think I could probably find this message pretty quickly. Yeah. Let's uh, let's play it on uh, voice to text at the end of the show. It was the funniest message, man. So back to you with your hard tit. All uh, right. It's not a hard tit thing. You're talking about... I prefer the opposite. Just, just, can you draw me a set of ragers? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, here it is. Wait, I got the text. All right. So I was doing voice to text, and I didn't think it was working. Did it not work? I think you had just had to wait for like half a second. And yeah. And you didn't, and it... Uh, your impatience with technology ended up screwing you in the long run. All right, so the text was, fucking telling you, fucking dumb bitch, can you please tell Luke that I hope your son feels better? I bet I'm telling her this, like I'm asking her to write this down. Siri, can you please tell Luke that I did? I hope your son feels better. And then I also want to thank him for all the work he did today. <laughs> Hang on, wait, wait. Send. <laughs> <laughs> do me a favor. Do okay, me a favor. He, he responded. Okay, okay, okay. If he didn't, I would, I would ask you to text him right now. To just making sure you saw this. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, this bitch just took over a dining matron job just because she wanted the job and killed her own friend to get it. Well, she does it again. So there's a woman named Mary Sullivan who she does this to. She's a housekeeper for this couple named Melvin and Eliza Beetle. So Mary Sullivan is the housekeeper. Melvin who? Beetle. What was the middle name? And Eliza is his uh, wife's okay. name. Oh, okay. The so Beatles. She... <laughs> Help. <laughs> <laughs> I need somebody, please. Dude, I wish I could stand out in the middle of a fucking crosswalk right now, John. What do you want to say, Jacob? <laughs> Nothing. I'm getting caught out on my aesthetic tumblers. <laughs> uh, I just uh, I knew it was gonna be an issue. Wait, Believe it or not, these are two different companies. They are incredibly. Yeah. Jay, can matching. you read that comment? Uh, Ross Blankenship asked me something. Mike, would you be open to your wife scissoring with a dead man's tooth? <laughs> 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 that would be the trade-off. <laughs> she puts All a right. Sabian on the top of a tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> What, what if that's like a more proficient way of communicating with the dead than a Ouija board? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ross, I think I would be okay with that. Well, then I think approaching the subject is going to be fine. Man, we're getting into it, man. We're about to have a very weird end of 2022. <laughs> I'm just saying, so if a woman has a nice set of ragers, <laughs> I would probably sit on a Sibian on a gravestone. <laughs> yeah. So she wants this housekeeping job that Mary Sullivan has. So she goes to the Beatles. She's like, yo, I want this job. And she ends up poisoning Mary Sullivan. And they're like, all right, well, I guess we don't have a fucking housekeeper now. Is so she still using strict nine? Um, it, it varies. Kind of like, whatever well, most of the time, she's on. still able to get her hand on some fucking high-level shit. Yeah. And most of the time that she's poisoning people, it is morphine and atropine. And those, how, the, be the Beatles were her friends. There are a couple that she that she worked for, yeah. Wow. So technically, she got by with a little help from her friends. How long have you been writing that one, you piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it, Jake, all right? <laughs> 1901, uh -huh. she poisons another landlord. A lady named Maddie Davis. She poisons her. This lady takes a while to die. It takes her a full week. For her to pass away Jesus Christ She's mm. not doing a great job She doesn't just add more poison To get the job done Or I, is she like off premises After that Dog I think she just gets off On slowly poisoning people sometimes Yeah Again landlord So she probably did something mm. Yeah Now she becomes familiar With the Davis family So next she moves in With Alden Davis Who is the dad Cool name <laughs> So she must really hate This fucking family Because she <laughs> She sets three separate fires in the Davis household. Oh, my God. How, did, how big is this house that it survives three fires? A dog, anytime she sets a fire, somebody in the house puts it out. <laughs> Fucking goddamn ladder 13 over there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
So in July of 1901, she kills another member of the Davis family, a woman named Genevieve, who was Alden Davis's daughter. Do you know how old? I do not know. Adult or uh, these people? No, yeah, it's an adult. Age? Yeah. It's an adult, yeah. So the, Alden Davis is an old man. Yeah. She tries to pass it off as suicide. Yeah, I saw her eating all that strychnine. I said, hey, <laughs> take it easy on that stuff. <laughs> so then in August of 1901, she kills Alden Davis, the dad. Damn. After that, she kills Alden Davis' oldest daughter, uh, Minnie. Who is left in this house? Not, m- not many more, buddy. Jesus Christ. Yep. So she's killing the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be the last Davis, because after that, she moves back to Lowell, Massachusetts. Okay. So that, that's got to be heartbreaking. It's like the last scene in The Fresh Prince where he's just looking around the house. Then he's just like, all right, I guess it's time to go. I'll put out the lights. Yeah. That actually does make me feel sad for this woman somehow. I told you, you're going to fall in love with her. What do you think she does now that she goes back to Lowell, Massachusetts? She's trying to get her fucking fucking cookie port. <laughs> this sounds like a uh, a meal that would make me throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make that for you. Yeah. Can you please write that down, Danny? <laughs> um, Close okay, your yeah. eyes. She go, what, she go to Newtown, hits the bars, try to get yeah. flunked. Try to show them the Raiders. She tried to get that cookie pork by her old brother-in-law, Oramul. Hmm. Wow. So to get closer to her old brother-in-law, Oramul, she poisons his sister. <laughs> Tell tale as old as time. <laughs> she poisons uh, his sister, Edna Bannister. And then what? Tries to just comfort him yeah. over the law? She's like, I guess I'll stick around and take care of you, bro. Now, at this point, um, going back to the Davises, uh, Minnie Davis... Her father-in-law <coughs> has some money, so he hires a toxicologist to exhume the Davis bodies because it's fucked up that they all died in, in within yeah, a few months crazy? of each other. Yeah. So they dig them up, and then they determine that they've all been poisoned. That's crazy that they could do that in the early 1900s. Yeah. Yeah. Very impressive science. See, that it pays cool. to hang around graveyards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now, during this time, she, her magic isn't working on Ormal, so she poisons him. At this time, she's like, all right, fuck it. This motherfucker doesn't want me either, so she ODs on morphine. Oh, my God. Yeah. So Jane is trying to kill herself. The call's coming Damn. from inside the house It now. is, baby. Damn. Um, and it was a sincere attempt? Or was I she don't know. just like, you know, being I think she was, because like, at this point, like she's, she's pulled out every card that she's had. Yeah. And I truly believe that all she wanted was to find somebody to love her and to have kids and to settle down and stop murdering. Yeah. But when it was clear that Ormal doesn't want her, then she fucking ODs on morphine, baby. I'm starting to think she's not well. <laughs> <laughs> I, did I ever tell y'all I, I OD'd on children's painkillers? <laughs> <laughs> um, mm, probably, but I'd like to hear it again. <laughs> So uh, there I was like this story a lot. This was before I had my big painkiller phase. This was like two thousand <laughs> literally little <Yeah>. painkiller phase. <laughs> <laughs> this was like I think two thousand and nine and I had to get a tooth pulled, but it was gonna be a few days before I could get to the dentist and my tooth was fucking killing me. So I called somebody and asked them if they had painkillers and that person was like, No, but my daughter's got some leftover painkillers from her surgery. So I was like, All right, let me have them. I'm thinking like, all right. Who is this father of the year you're talking about? Uh, I don't want to divulge. <laughs> so this person gives me like this bottle full of children's painkillers. So I take him home. I get a bottle of uh, Tullamore Dew to top it off with. Jesus, Mike. So I'm How th- big of a bottle of Tullamore Dew are you getting? The big boy bottle. Well, not the handle. <clears throat> I didn't drink the whole handle, Mike, but I got the handle Jesus. just to have. What cartoon character was on the pill bottle? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sleepy from the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> <laughs> and man, I was having a fucking blast. And in my head, how many pills at a time? Numerous. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm thinking, all right, these are children's painkillers. How like how badly the are milligrams these? Milligrams are right on the bottle, though, dude. But I'm thinking, like, if they're giving them the kids, yeah, this this is going to take a lot. Like, that I feel like sense. Shaq. 
you know, it's going to take a lot more than a normal size dose yeah, to get to me. Were, were you vi- works. <laughs> were <laughs> it you, took me a while to realize that. <laughs> were you vibing out the kids, Bob? Was it this? Just, uh, Jake, so I was vibing, man. Yeah. Dude, I was like, I remember sitting in the kitchen. Barney ki- on the TV, kids, <laughs> Bob, on the fucking radio. The children's at, version of where, Dark Side of the Rainbow. <laughs> Wearing candy necklace bling. Just <laughs> I'm actually snorting per- children's perks off a of kid's bop CD case. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I remember sitting there with my wife and uh, her saying like, she's like, wow, like remarking how enjoyable I was to speak with that night. Nice. And it's funny because Danny and I were just having a conversation before we recorded the night. I, uh, I was talking about how I'm always on edge and it's so hard for me to relax. Like I have to literally overdose on drugs to be able to chill. So that night I was fucking <laughs> chilling, man. And then... I don't know, maybe like two or three in the morning, I woke up and I couldn't breathe. So an ambulance came and it took me to the hospital. And uh, they kept me there a few hours. And then the guy, the uh, the fucking... You picture dinosaurs on the wall and shit. <laughs> <laughs> they do the x-ray, his stomach's full of Fred Flintstones. <laughs> they got me in a crib fucking thing. But dude, the doctor that came in, he's like, uh, he's like, what did you take? And I told him what I took. He's like, why are you taking children's painkillers? I was like, because I got a tooth that fucking hurts. He's like, let me see. And I showed him, and he's like, all right. He's like, well, I'm going to give you a prescription for adult painkillers. Since g- you handled these so well. Yeah. <laughs> so he gave me a prescription for uh, 10 5 milligram perks after I just fucking OD'd on painkillers. That's a good doctor right there. Yeah. So that Jolly night. Jolly Jane. <laughs> <laughs> so that night I went out. I remember the Flyers were playing. So I went out and partied, and I. Uh, the very next night. It was actually it was the same night because it was I went there at like three in the morning I think it was, so that night I was back watching hockey partying with my boys. Wow, party monster, brother! Mm-hmm. That's impressive, man. I am, man, I miss partying sometimes, man. Yeah, I know I made the right choice, but man, those were the days. Well, whenever you decide to dip back in, would you say seventy five years old? I'm gonna be there for your first. Oh, uh, thank you, man. Your first night, no matter where I am in the world, brother. I'm forty three, so in this neighborhood, I only got thirty two more years, so I can do it. That's great. It does. Yeah. You know it's going to fly by. I know it will, baby. I'll be waiting for you boys in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that Aunt Pat or Jake? Uh, oh. <laughs> I think it was both of us, actually, in unison. What do you mean when you said you you, you were done bre- you stopped breathing? I was still breathing, but it was very difficult to breathe. How does that Happen from painkillers. I don't. I never heard of that. It, it crushes like your respiratory system. Jesus Christ, man! You were really a warrior. That, I think that's really like how most people end up ODing on painkillers. Is it just severely inhibits your respiratory system? I had no idea. I gotta check this stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Ormel, after she recovers from ODing on morphine, Ormel kicks her out. So she's still in the house after she tries to kill him and after she tries to kill herself. Ormol is enough of a gentleman yeah. to be like, yo, you got to get out. You got to get out of here. You know, you got to get the stepping bitch. Take them to Ragers elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but here's Take the deal. Like, fat, beautiful Ragers <laughs> down the street, bitch. She was described as an obese woman. But when I, the one exact representation of her weight that I found, like, to me, I don't find as being overweight. What it's do like you, 175. She was 209. Which a is like a bitch. normal lady. What? What? How tall was she? I don't know, man. Normal lady size. I don't think that's heavy. Five, six, two hundred. Not, not a good look. You're gonna be, you're gonna be more shaped like a fucking empanada than a. Uh... <laughs> chill, dog. Chill. Oh. <laughs> you're upset. I lot love of empanadas. <laughs> yeah. I like empanadas too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if the rules have changed. Is 209 morbidly obese for a woman now? Or are you saying it was back then and now it's not? Well, I, I think it depends on your size. If you're if you're breaking it down in, in accordance with BMI. However, I think back then it took a lot to become overweight. I don't think many people were fat. Yeah. I think in order to qualify as a Delco resident, you have to be 209 pounds as a woman. Now, I'm. this is way <laughs> off base, but I'm just... Thinking back to like uh, I just watched a documentary which which showed Live Aid, which was about uh, probably 140 years away from <laughs> from this time period. Uh-huh. But I'm just going to uh, saying this to accentuate how everybody was skinny, even at that time. Which yeah. I think Live Aid was probably like 1985 or something. Yeah. yeah. So I think 
people didn't start getting fat until like the fucking nineties. Then we really fucking started. Well, they started fucking with the food, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as I started eating McDonald's every fucking day. What are they putting in that stuff, man? <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, ba da ba ba ba. I'm loving these tits. <laughs> <laughs> loving these Ragers. <laughs> Thank you, Ronald, for my Ragers. <laughs> yeah, if you want to know what Ragers are? Flip that gold, those golden, golden arches upside uh, down. Oh, you devil. Those are some Ragers. You damn devil, Jake. <laughs> damn, I could have been jerking off to an upside down fry canister this whole Yo. time. I, that's why you see me in the McDonald's parking lot doing a headstand. <laughs> <laughs> the guy is horny, but he is stupid. <laughs> he doesn't know. He can just turn Yo. the fucking fries upside down. All right. Julia says she was 5'3". I had a fappy meal. <laughs> All right. I'm so sorry. 5'3", 209. I think that's a regular lady. Brother, that's a fucking medicine ball. <laughs> <laughs> You need some strong men to handle. <laughs> Let's agree to disagree. Really, just, just, yeah. We love our medicine balls. <laughs> Kirk, I disagree. Kirk Gregory says, yeah, two and nine pound shortbread is a wrecking ball. <laughs> <laughs> Me and K. Gregory are really on the same page. Wow. <laughs> well, excuse me for loving a bitch that's built like a dishwasher. <laughs> All right, so October 29th, 1901, the autopsy results get in that the fucking Davis's father-in-law had paid for. Turns out they were all poisoned. They put it together that fucking Jane Toppin's responsible. She gets arrested. Initially, she's arrested just for the murder of Minnie Davis. Once they get her into custody, she ends up confessing to 11, 11 murders, but they only charge her with three. Now, in June 23rd, 1902, She's found not guilty by reason of insanity, which doesn't mean she gets to go away and just do her own thing. It just means, like, she's not going to be put in a normal prison. Yeah. She's got to be put in a mental hospital. And this mental hospital is called the Taunton Insane Hospital for... Wait, no. The Taunton Hospital for the Insane. Mike, I believe it's pronounced Tauntaun. <laughs> it's a, a large animal reference from Star Wars. Oh, Jake, you know what? It's when Luke cuts open to keep himself warm. You go night night in there. I'm gonna cut one of your big titty bitches open <laughs> and stay in there. Then send you a picture, and make you jealous. Oh. Yeah, how about a fucking nice fat tom tom with some ragers. <laughs> <laughs> that gives my lightsaber glowing, brother. <laughs> Dude, here's the thing: she's at this fucking hospital for close to four decades, and they take pictures. They have like yearbook. Holy fun. shit, dog! She's there forever. She seems happy there too. Yeah, she's living the fucking good life now, dude. Dog, there's. There's pictures of her like when she got arrested, and then they have pictures of her after a few years at this fucking uh, mental hospital. She got some drool coming out of her mouth. Her tongue's fucking no, the opposite. Lobotomized. Dog. She loses weight, and Damn. she's smiling. Damn, dude, she's holding mm. up a pair of old pants. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they caught her with child drawings. <laughs> Unfortunately, August 17th, 1938, Jake, uh, she passes away of old age. Oh, damn. How old? Is it 43? She's almost 90? So she was 16 years, so 84. Wow. Fucking A, man. Yeah, That's she great. lived it, man. And 38 of the, 36 or 38 of those years were at this mental hospital. She had free pills for th- almost four decades. Now, a life. Oh, here's one of the funnier things that I read. Um, one of the people that worked at the hospital said... As she um, descended further and further into mental illness, she would think that she was still working as a nurse. So she would start yelling out for people to bring her pills to administer to patients. Damn. Do you think she was sincerely whacked or just a bad bitch? I think a combination. I mean, part of what I'm basing that off of is how fucked up the mental illness was in her family. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't think she just got to fucking skirt, skirt. Around all that. But I don't think I believe in mental illness. <laughs> well, mental illness doesn't exist, John. Mental illness does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I stand by what I said. What do you get? Mental illness from banging your head? <laughs> <laughs> Iron deficiency. Iron uh, maiden deficiency? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she was uh, doing that pill bit mm-hmm. to make people think she was crazy. That's what I always think. When somebody's acting crazy, they're doing it on purpose. But, dog, here's the deal. Like, like Ace Ventura when he visited the Yes. Bar- yes, okay. 
But what is she going to get in Ray regards to special belongings? treatment? Well, if she acts too normal, they'll send her to a regular fucking... They're not. She's already remanded to a fucking mental hospital forever. For life? Yeah. Can't reverse it? No takesies, backsies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did an overnight in a mental hospital. Like a sleepover? Yeah. Like I was like... like a ride along? <laughs> Dude, I went there. I went to uh, Mercy Fitzgerald Hospital in Derby. Like, they have a mental hospital there? They did. This was 1998, maybe. And, dude, I knew to go there because from... What is that street? Is that Lansdowne Avenue? Yeah. From Lansdowne Avenue, they had a sign that said fucking, you know, emergency, like, mental fucking whatever. And they had an intercom right there. So I'd passed it so many times because my boy lived right down the street there on Golf Road. So one day, like, I was just super depressed. I was like, man, I got to do something about this. Like, I just want to fucking die. So I went there, and I rang the buzzer. Who do you think answered but a Miss Gladys? Was she willing to accept you? Well, it was a little rigmarole first because uh, she's like, can I help you? I was like, uh, yeah, I'm depressed. And she goes, depressed about what? <laughs> I was like, uh, I want to kill myself. And she's like, uh, hold on. So she went and got oh, somebody. by the book. Yeah. yeah. Whoever happened to be taking a shit was probably done. And coming <laughs> to the intercom at that time, be like, yeah, can I help you? And I repeated that. They're like, oh, yeah, come on in. So they had somebody meet me down there. And I stayed overnight. And uh, I think I just needed to like be in a different place that wasn't my house. Yeah. I mean, I was definitely depressed. But like. If you could have afforded a hotel room by the airport, you would have done that. But. No, I, I would have gone there because I thought there was something wrong with me. And I, I definitely was depressed. But looking back, it was like I was clearly in an extremely toxic environment and I just needed like some kind of structure. We had uh, oh, the yeah. sauce then? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't doing Those any drugs. too? No, I didn't get into Coke until 2006. Okay. But. Dude, shout out Miss Gladys. What a good uh, tactic for a suicidal person. Depressed about, about what? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. That's the thing, because yeah. then you're you're waiting. You're suicidal, but you're like, all right, what, uh, what are they? Yeah, I gotta kill let this I can't, lady down. Can't kill myself until this person comes back. <laughs> so that's a good move. Just do that. That's what the suicide hotline should be. It's just someone Ms. answering Gladys. the phone, just going, mm. "Hold on, yeah, <laughs> please hold." Pleasant music. <laughs> this isn't so bad. And she's on speakerphone the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> on a bus, you hear yeah. smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Oh. Hip is going right out the window. <laughs> Damn, Mike. Well, I'm glad they're okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. I feel great now. One night's all it took? Yeah, again, like, I don't think that, like... I mean, there was people in there that clearly, like, needed, like, inpatient services. Yeah. I think what they eventually gave me was I went ended up going to a place. They, they referred me to a place in Sharon Hill where you just... I went to, like, group therapy, and then I had one-on-one yeah. -on -one therapy. And that was more helpful. That was more my speed. Okay, Mike, where does this line up with your uh, Foreman Mills story? Burlington Co. Factory. Burlington Co. Factory. Ooh, wow. Well, um, right time. around the time, yeah. Like, yeah. this, that might oh, have so been, like, what real. sent me there. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, yeah, I, I definitely did want to die. Yeah. But at the same time, it was like, I probably could have had shit figured out. Like... Yeah. Just needed somebody to tell me, like, okay, if you line these things up, like, yeah, you'll probably start to feel better because like I don't think anything's like not for that reason. I don't think my brain's like fucking predisposed to depression. Yeah. I just think most of like any depression I've experienced is situational. Yeah. Good. Glad you made it out of there. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Where is this place? <laughs> <laughs> it's in Darby. I don't think you want to go there is now. There a bar in walking distance. You don't want to go there. It's the Crab Tavern. Yeah. Bad place. Ah, pretty wild, yeah. Will I be able to get some uh, drugs there? Yeah. Fucking A. So why don't I want to go? Well, give it a shot, man. All right. You can be right. Yeah, I would love to. <laughs> Actually, a couple of my classmates killed a guy outside of the Crab Tavern. Jesus Christ. I was going to say, we'll be visiting John in a graveyard. <laughs> Actually, I think that's the graveyard where, uh, is that the graveyard? That's H.H. Holmes. Yeah, yeah. H.H. Yeah. Holmes is yeah, the dude, yeah. Really? A about yeah. a quarter mile from the Crab Tavern is the graveyard where H.H. H. Holmes yeah. is buried, right? Yep, he's well, buried in an unmarked all grave. Up and piss on his grave? He, it's unmarked. So we just gonna have Let's to mark piss it. everywhere. Piss everywhere. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Grab <laughs> yeah. a couple of your cups. From home. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring a couple gallons with me. You know how on like fucking Memorial Day, like people go around putting flags at every fucking tombstone. <laughs> like we'll just go around and piss on everyone, <laughs> thinking it's his. <laughs> no, we're trying to piss on bad guys. <laughs> this one says Kozlowski. Yeah. Just do it anyway. We're at Arlington National Cemetery though. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dude, we're going to be on every morning show. Like three fat fucking retards are taking it upon themselves to no. visit every tombstone in the United States yeah. in the hopes that eventually they'll piss on H.H. H. Holmes' head <laughs> headstone. <laughs> Mike's I mean, there can't be that many unmarked graves, right? Mike's falling in love with old bitches in the uh, <laughs> graveyard. Uh, yes. Mike, what do you think uh, two ghosts would do if two ghosts fell in love? What do you think? How would they get it on? Oh wow! They would probably utilize the Kamabutra. <laughs> found it Very pretty nice. quick. Yeah, that's that's good. Now, truth be told, <laughs> you think they take a butu? <laughs> <laughs> That's a million times better. <laughs> right. What do you think they ate before? Some goulash? <laughs> How'd you get baby vomit on your hat, Brent? Uh, damn. Do I? It, it gets everywhere, man. It gets everywhere. You know, the hardest part about ghost fucking is uh, you can never get between the sheets. <laughs> How are the bottoms of these ghosts shaped? Like little upside Parachute. down uh, bells. Are these ghosts fully formed? They got rumpers. They have legs. What do you call them? Bunk dumpers? Rumpers? Do you think? Do you think you? <laughs> you think you put your ghost dick through her eye hole? <laughs> Mike, <laughs> would you do that to a living ghost? <laughs> <laughs> you mean a real lady? Yeah. <laughs> How's the chat been? You've been monitoring <laughs> it? They're enjoying it. They're enjoying it? Oh, yeah. Mike Trader, a Medea suicide prevention clinic. <laughs> you got depression? I had a cousin named Depression, and I know you ain't got her. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Michael said. <laughs> Man, what an era that was. Late 90s, baby. All I did was drink Coors Light. And obtain mental health services. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Did, you, did your insurance cover it at the time? Uh, I don't think I had insurance. Yeah, th dude, the place I went to. You were young. You might have been on your parents' insurance, or that I, probably didn't get extended. Until. I don't think so, dude. Because the place that I went yeah. to, it was called Northwestern Human Services, and like, when e you either have shitty insurance or no insurance, you got to go to one of these places, and like, it's fucked up. There's yeah. just in the waiting room. Waiting room smells like piss. People are screaming. And I had a fucking I went to group therapy and I had individual therapy. And did you share in group? Uh, I lied in group because there was an attractive lady. What did you lie about? What did you say? I'm actually a totally normal guy. And, uh, <laughs> I must be here by some mistake. My dick gets really big when it's hard and uh i lied about like how i think the root of my problems is just that i haven't been able to find love yet damn my christ dude <laughs> you would have been on one of those fucking shitty 2000s mtv shows next next or yeah. fucking room raiders or some oh, shit oh man pimp my brain <laughs> <laughs> My yeah, brain. your shit was all fucked up, so we gave you some new medicine to be on. <laughs> <laughs> now, hopefully, you won't flip the bird at everybody that gives you a weird look. We gave him an SSRI, so now he's going to be SSRI. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also a karaoke machine in his asshole. <laughs> I went there for a couple of years, and I was so disappointed in my... Went where for a couple of years? To this place, Northwestern, Northwestern Human Services. For solo... For group, for group, and then eventually the lady who was running the group was very, very kind. And <laughs> James Benson wrote, "Pimp my padded room." <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. The, yeah, the lady who ran the group was very, very kind and made time for me to come for individual therapy. Wow. At like fucking eight thirty at night, so this lady's had a long fucking day. That sounds like a little. Like you're you're putting out that love language and group Ooh. and she was uh, she's looking back. She want a little crazy Mike Weiner. Hey, uh, <laughs> she want to fuck with crazy Mike. Crazy Mike <laughs> Weiner. <laughs> yeah, I actually got an eight thirty dick appointment with crazy Mike tonight. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, I was so disappointed. And this might have been why I stopped going to her is because I, it was when Aunt Patsy left me the five G's. Yeah. November two thousand and one. I went to Vegas. Now, I would regularly skip these appointments with her just because I was getting pussy at the time. 
and um, it was very rude of me to do so because she was making time for me. It's weird how money just makes you happy very fast. <laughs> oh, it yeah, does, dude. You know? yeah, yeah. I went back. Oh, all I needed was a Sega. <laughs> John, I got a Dreamcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking yeah. A, dog. <laughs> yeah, I knew up. it. And I went back the week after I got that bread. I was already, I had already plowed through all that money. And I just wanted to tell her how exciting my Las Vegas trip was. She's like, she's like, oh, that's not real. That's glitz. I was like, oh, I have fun, though. She's like, yeah, but she's like, it's all gone now. Damn. Wow, that's like, depressing. Yeah. She, yeah. Uh, I actually live for the memories, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Once you pull them ragers out, let me suck on them times. <laughs> How much do you think therapist fucking happens? It feels like very palpable in the moment. I would imagine, right? Yeah. yeah. I've seen some Maybe I'll start going to therapy. Yeah, you'd be good at therapy. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. I think you're pretty well adjusted. I don't think you yeah. have a lot of demons. I think I do a pretty good job of analyzing myself as well. No. Oh. Yeah, when you start seeing a therapist, let me know his name. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. You think I'm going to go fuck a male therapist? I get it. I get it. I know what you're doing over there. Jake, would you go to therapy with me? I'd go to therapy with you. Yeah, sure. Dude, I'd cry too quick. Like, if I could. If I I'd come too quick. We'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Dude, if we had to come off, I could probably beat you by like a mile. Uh, yeah. What, with crying? No, no, with coming and crying at the same time. As soon as we undress, then they're off. <laughs> yeah. Ross Blankenship said the Joker fucked his therapist. No <laughs> doubt. I would love to be able to, to go back to therapy. That shit got so expensive, though. Dude, I, you were paying out of pocket for that? When I went, uh, I don't think I was paying for that. That might have been, I either had, hey, dude, I might have been. Papa John's on... doesn't cover mental health. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Sorry, right, baby. <laughs> I I don't I don't think it was in my parents' insurance. It might have been like county provided, but when I was able to go to a nicer place, yeah. it was like eighty bucks a session, which Damn, at the still, time was yeah. a lot. It's and it's still a lot. lot. Yeah. yeah, like I I don't know if I would put out fucking three hundred twenty bucks a month. Yeah, to go now, I would love to, but it's crazy. It's not like fully covered, you know. Yeah, yeah. that is a lot of money. I like I'd that. Probably place, stay though. crazy. For that price <laughs> it is it, dude there's so much fucking red tape to go through like when you have legitimate mental illness issues uh-huh. to just get to the point where you're going to a therapist yeah it's like when you really fucking need it it's like you better pray to god that you have somebody who's going to guide you through the process because somebody going through a legitimate mental health crisis probably is going to have a difficult time navigating all the steps to get all the the fucking t's crossed and the i's dotted to be able just to get to the fucking appointment Dude, the last job I had, they offered free mental health services. Oh, that's great. It was like 10 sessions a year, though. Whoa. So you yeah. just had to, like, you had to, like, choose your... You choose know. your crazy month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it had to be, essentially, all 10 sessions had to be basically, like, about that one thing. Which You is couldn't like go off book? Yeah, you couldn't, like, just stay life, <laughs> you know? Yeah. What yeah, the you, fuck? yeah, it was weird, yeah. There, so there was, like, limitations. So to starting with the first session... You couldn't stray from the topic you brought up that day. Yeah, essentially everything had to follow the theme of whatever your initial request was. Uh, that's fucked. Normal. Yeah, that's, Dude, I mean that's how they get. I to mean it, that's right? indicative of just how fucking circuitous this whole fucking process is. Yeah. Like it can't just be like I need help and go to this place and they'll yeah. fucking hook you up. Yeah. There was uh, when I um, yeah I got fucking I got well, I didn't get boned because I put myself in this own in this hole. But I had a job as a as an operating room orderly, and I was supposed to be on call one weekend. And I went to the Eagles game and got hammered, and they called me while I was at the fucking game. So I talked to my union rep. They're like, well, if you have a drinking or drug problem, you can go through the drug or, or drinking treatment program and still keep your job. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go through this shit. Well, yeah, the reason I don't want to come into work is so I can get fucked up, so it does sound like a, <laughs> a match. <laughs> This was the stinky doggy incident, right? This was you were shaving the old uh, oh stinky dogs, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forgot I told you this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so. What did you get inpatient after that? Or two no, weeks I, off. I got outpatient. So they made me go to outpatient for I think like two months before. But the purpose I, was to keep your job. Yeah, and yeah. You kept it. it. No, well, for a little bit, but then I was dude regular. You got paid more to shave pews at Papa John's. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, I cannot <laughs> tell you. This? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? 
Pizza Hut, Papa John's, Domino's, all get their pubes from the same <laughs> Wisconsin <laughs> pube farm. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes from the same fella. <laughs> Good old Jerry. I'm just standing over the patients, telling them to say when. <laughs> it sucks while it cuts. Yeah. It certainly does suck. <laughs> go on. I forget what I was even saying. Shaving pubes. Yeah. So oh, but I would go to outpatient just... Initially to keep my job, but dude, the effect that regular pussy had on every aspect of my life, yeah, it, dude, I quit the Marines. Dude. <laughs> All right, that's dude. something you should be bragging about on dude, Memorial Day. I don't, I don't know. Dude. <laughs> Man, as soon as I got my dick wet, I gave up on the fucking military. <laughs> I abandoned my country. <laughs> dude, that's a testament to how good my wife's pussy is. <laughs> Yo, you ever go AWOL for some pussy? <laughs> uh, salute. <laughs> oh, oh, salute them shorts, brother. Yeah, I just want to salute my wife real quick. <laughs> Dude, that, That's you, the proud, man. the ragers. <laughs> I, I went back to that fucking inpatient center just to tell Miss Gladys I was getting regular pussy again. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that, whew, man. I was off the hook for that thing. Damn, dude. How many people have we walked, Danny? <laughs> What do we got left in there? <laughs> Just my wife. <laughs> we got a brave 62 souls that stayed the whole time. Uh, yeah. We got 62 wow. souls on board. Yeah. Double what we started with. Damn, you guys are the fucking best. Yeah, anybody else? The fucking best. Anybody else been through some fucking, uh, some wild ass fucking psych wards? Or some when I did outpatient rehab, I was supposed to, uh, it was school mandated to get back into college. And I was supposed to go to a AA meeting. And, like, write a report about it and be like, oh, I did go to a meeting. This is what mm-hmm. happens there. Uh, I did not do it, though. I just lied and mm-hmm. looked up what happens at AA yeah, meetings. Yeah. Did you ever go to a true, like, 12-step program meeting? Oh, you do. When I when I got first got sober for real five years ago, I went for, like, every day for a year. No way. Every single day. Just about every day, yeah. Holy shit. And that was, I mean, I don't go anymore, but, like, that was vital in, like, helping it me really get me straightened from out. from having a habit to... yeah. All right, coffee and donuts with these strangers yeah. is replacing. Yeah. Yeah. And if anybody's, like, struggling with anything, like, I know, like, you know, people that have tried to get sober or don't want to get or whatever, just, like, shit talk 12-step programs. But, like, they they were super helpful for me. And it's, like, it doesn't have to be, like, a long-term commitment. Like, you, either you go or you don't. Like, nobody else gives a fuck. But, you know, if you're struggling, like, I would definitely recommend it because it does provide some much-needed structure when your life's chaos. Yeah. Did you have a proper sponsor? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. Um, every now and again, I'll message him on Facebook. Like, he's a great guy. And yeah, I bet he's fucking so hyped every time he hears <laughs> it. Like, no, for real. Like, knowing that you, uh, you yeah. don't need the program, but you've stayed sober. Yeah. I bet you he gets, like, fucking excited. Oh, about that's not nice shit. Yeah, you know? I thought, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bet he's excited <laughs> to hear me talking about how my life is, <laughs> is falling apart. How I was leaving everything behind for some pussy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, he's great. People are, people are kind there for the most part. There are some psychos. Yeah, uh, do they last? Are they there every week? It depends, man. Because you can go wherever you want, and especially in the beginning, I was like going all over the place just to try different things and That's to just yeah. get different perspectives. Figure but what your right group is one of the things that really fucking weirded me out on the whole process was people are are very um, they give you their their phone number a lot and they expect you to give you theirs, give yeah, give yeah. them your phone number as well. They want most, to be a two-way street. Yeah, yeah. Most people are very well-meaning. However, some people are just absolute psychos. That are just trying to, like... Collect numbers. Gossip with you, like, start shit with other people kind of thing. Well, dude, even... I mean, even more, not even just starting shit, but just... Like, two people stood out. One was a guy who was just hitting me up constantly. And I was like, dude, just... I don't know how to tell you this, but, like, I'm good. I'm not the kind that's going to talk to you all the time, so... Let's leave it at that. We never spoke again, but one was a lady. You texted him that? Yeah. Oh, good for Yeah, you. but I, I found a very polite way to say that. And, like, one was a lady who, after, like, the second message, I didn't even respond. And then she sent me, like, this long, insane message about how insane it is not to get back to people when they're trying to help you. I was like, bitch, like, I got a wife and kids. Oh, and they like, were trying like, to act like they were helping you. Yeah. And you 
we're acting like I'm do- I don't necessarily need this from you. But it's it wasn't. They so- weren't. They're more reaching out because they want to be wanted. Yes. In that situation. Yeah. yeah. And fortunately, you know, that's more of an anomaly. Whereas m- more people. That, Good. There's, there's yeah. not the standard. Right. Yeah. Half the people aren't like that. Most people. I think the people that are most helpful are like, look, here's my number. Call me if you need me. If not, I, I truly don't. I'm not going to lose any sleep yeah. if you go out drinking or, or drugging. Yeah. You can't be like. You would lose your mind. 100% invested in these seven right. strangers. Some like, people do. I mean, like, there's some extremely kind people that will really, like, if you're into it, especially, like, really good sponsors will, yeah. like, fucking dig in your ass. Is that, like, their, but that's their new focus, their new addiction, you would say. Probably, I think so, right? yeah. They just focus yeah. it on that. Yeah. And that is one thing that, like, I realized, like, to, like, not engaging in any substance for so long is, like, the fucking, the drugs and the alcohol are just... You know, more representative some of a deeper issue. It's like, yeah, those things might not ever work for you, but it's clear that like all your problems don't go away when you cut that shit out. You know, it's clear that like you're engaging in excess of drinking and drugging for a certain reason. Right, that reason stays there. Yeah, after and then you stop. Yeah, and then you have the clarity to address mm-hmm. that. Like, did you have that thought while you were like in it, or was this something you you like? reach like so subco- like self-conscious of after the fact um it, it took probably three years yeah to just realize like like i know now like my baseline is like i, I never feel like comfortable and i i really am I'm just anxious 24 7 yeah and i'm thinking i can't imagine cocaine helped that though right dog coke had the opposite effect on me that it does on most people like i it chilled you out i john i could stand in one spot for an entire night like, I, I wouldn't need to move. I wouldn't need to do anything. The only thing that I would do excessively is talk. I just yeah. wanted to talk. But I could, I, my feet, I could go an entire night without moving my feet on cocaine. I'm a little worried now because you do a lot of podcasting <laughs> <laughs> in one spot. It's, yeah. You know. Whereas with Opie, it's like that was more of my active thing. Yeah. You'd be scooting I was doing the shit. Bar. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I was, you know, moving and shaking. I was yeah. like, fucking. You know that is weird. You you had the opposite effects uh, from typical users for both things. Yeah, I th- opioids usually zonk people out. Mm-hmm. You were fucking that would happen out. sometimes. I think you know when I would take more than I was prescribed, I would fucking nod out. Yeah. yeah. However, you know, just if I were you know take toward the end, like I was prescribed fifteen milligram painkillers, and if I took one of them, that would be my getting shit done Damn. dosage. Now, if I was shutting it down, the fucking Watch movies for the night. I would take three of those bad boys and just chill the fuck out. <laughs> Going to Flavor Town, baby. Did you do both NA and AA meetings to try everything? Yeah, NA wasn't really my speed. NA is really? like, it's more buck wild. Really, dude. Like del- fucking math crack. Like people really fucking homeless shit. Yeah, there's a lot of wild shit there. Like AA is just more my speed. It's just it seems to be from my experience more people like serious about getting sober mm-hmm. okay but yeah that, that shit was helpful and crushing it now man yeah you're you're crushing it oh uh, boy your couch yes no my heart you fucking <laughs> you damn sweetheart <laughs> all right we got to talk about some spooky stuff we're gonna do soon oh man so i know we had talked about possibly going to wait before we go into that we, we asked anybody if they've had this problem, and the only real r- response was, any chronic masturbator out there? <laughs> Shout out to the fucking group on that, dude. You guys are fucking... <laughs> Thank you for holding it down in there while I got fucking... <laughs> there was a great comment. Uh, Danny Dubs, can you scroll up for a second? There was a Kenny... I think it was Gregory about uh, Mike's Marine stint. Where is it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Can you read that? Because I can't, I can't see it. Yeah, he said new marine commercial, uh, but it's Mike on a mountaintop, sword fight at a giant pussy. The first weekend, Am I good now, dude? The first weekend where the pussy had me. Committing dereliction of duty, <laughs> dude. We were supposed to be going to uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey. Okay. And uh, we would like get all our shit on this on this bus, 
and then everybody would load into the bus. He went to Fort Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jake. <laughs> and uh, at the time, my mother was sick with stomach cancer. Jeez. But I'm going to be totally honest with y'all. I used that as an excuse to just get more pussy that weekend. <laughs> Wait, you didn't go to the camp? I didn't. So what had happened was... You it, said, I can't go to camp. My, my yeah, I'm, I'm very upset. I was upset about my mom, but... Yeah, just because you got some pussy that weekend doesn't mean you lied. I, yeah, true. <laughs> I was very upset about that, but... Did you see your mom that weekend? I did, yeah. Okay. I also oh, yeah, got so, yeah. a ton of pussy, Jake. <laughs> but the bus was ready to go, and they were waiting for me because like, they didn't know what was happening. I went in to talk to my... um to um, I, f- I forget what the what the names of these people were. Like whoever waiting. my commanding officer was yeah. at the time, and then he's like, he's like, all right, dude, just you know, you can bail for the weekend. And uh, I went, I got in my car, and then I fucking floored it out of there. I had this little red geo prism, and uh, <laughs> I was gonna reference you having a prism earlier. Oh no way! Yeah, I did, man. I you love seem that like car. The kind of guy. Thank you, nice. man. <laughs> And then, uh, you seem like the kind of guy with the shittiest fucking possible <laughs> car on the road. And I still got the pussy. <laughs> but I, I was, I was there with my boy Steve, and uh, I saw Steve on Sunday night when he got back from Fort Dix. He's like, "Yeah, dude, I don't know what happened to you." Then all of a sudden, I see this fucking your little fucking geo prism speeding past the bus, and I knew you were fucking going to see your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that motherfucker's mom about to croak. He's got some <laughs> pussy on the other line. <laughs> is your mother still alive? She is, yeah. God bless, man. Yeah, uh, well, awesome. I'm going to say this. Dude, she had a fat fucking ass before cancer took her from her. Cancer took her ass? Dog, I'll never forget. Like, th- You know you have a big ass Like when one of your son's early childhood memories is of how big your ass is. <laughs> So there was there was a Pat Stakes in Upper Darby. I don't know if it was related to the Pat Stakes in South Philly. Okay. However, I remember um, going to see her there, and I remember seeing her in her uniform, and I remember being very proud that my mom was working and like seeing her, and I was like, oh, wow, my mom's here. And then the thing that stands out the most about seeing my mom working behind a counter at Pat Stakes is how big her fucking ass looked in the blue pants she had to wear. Oh, man. Were you tall enough to see over the counter? Yeah, yeah. And what she? Uh, she yeah, she I, had chemo from the stomach cancer that made her skinny. They had to remove part of her stomach, so she ended up losing a lot of weight and. Wow. Very healthy, and it's just you know things worked she's out. She's remained for her. on the healthy side since. Yes. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So That's awesome. yeah, she's great doing great. Story, yeah. But man, that was a dumper that she had. <laughs> Damn. Dude, her butt was so big that like when she would wake up in the morning, like. She wouldn't shut the door and she would pee. So she would fucking... I would I would be too scared to go downstairs by myself. So I would wait for my mom to go to the bathroom. And before she peed, I would always hear this fucking bass-heavy fart coming out of those cheeks. <laughs> and that's how I knew, like, all right, it's safe to go downstairs now because she's going to be down there in a minute. Like Santa Claus. Just <laughs> Ross says, happy birthday in heaven to Mike's mom's fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ross. <laughs> and Patsy, do you see my mom's ass up there? Oh, God. <laughs> 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 uh, the beagles using it Head's using it as a dog bed Oh uh, dude I will say this Head um, head was with my parents during that time And he was very sweet And like he would just stay with my mom That's so nice Yeah it was so nice. Then he ripped my fucking aunt out of the house And then you had to <laughs> Like a fucking eviction notice And then you basically put the needle in his body yourself John, no. <laughs> But I couldn't care for him properly And nobody in my family would care for him So like there was nothing I wonder, it's a rough spot to be in. I it is, and I, it was. I, I, I truly, I'm still bothered by it. To, John, today. do you think you would have taken better care of that dog if its name was Nookie? Wait, it would have been like a uh, fucking. Who's another nicknamed <laughs> DJ, <metal> lethal? <laughs> DJ Lethal? <laughs> DJ Lethal Injection. <laughs> <laughs> That's who put him down. <laughs> Mike was like, I'm going to do things my way. <laughs> <laughs> Who was, uh, were there any nicknames in uh, Limp Bizkit? What was the one guy with the West contacts? West Borland. West Borland. Borland. Uh, DJ Lethal, John Otto. Uh, what was the bass guy's name? Did he have a nickname? 
Wes Borland too. No, John. No, John Otto was the drummer. Hmm. If we're yeah. talking nicknamed basses, you got Peanut from Three Eleven. <laughs> uh, what are their nicknames? Fieldy from Corn. Fieldy. Yeah. That's yeah. another nickname. Flea. 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 All right, Fieldy was the answer to what I was trying okay, to Okay, yeah. Is bass so embarrassing one. that you can't use your real name? <laughs> <laughs> Man, who was the bassist from Limp Bizkit? Yeah, I can't remember that guy's name. I don't think he remembers his name. <laughs> hey, Dave, what's up, man? Damn, Moose, you had some bow remove. Can you mail to Jake? Jake, give out your address. Yes, it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm like, what's your address again? <laughs> Just say it real quick. Yeah, I think we've reached the point now. <laughs> yeah. The chat's really starting to die down. Flee, there we go, Nick. <laughs> 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 we're fucking three minutes behind yeah. what we already said, but we're getting excited. Yeah, can anybody it. else name some bassist? <laughs> the bassist from Limp Bizkit is the one we're really after here. Yeah, what is that fucking guy's name? Like bald guy. Was he bald? No one's going to look this up for yeah. us. Seven I saw inches. Somebody, I saw a tweet that somebody said Flea is the most uh, recognizable slash famous chili person pepper? in Chili Peppers. Yeah. Moose, you would you're... say that? Yeah. More than the lead singer. Absolutely, Sam dude. Rivers. Sam Rivers, okay. Sam Rivers, yep, no. Moose, Never are you referring guy. to your dick or your bow? Let's Borland. <laughs> We got people sincerely fucking just naming any bases yeah. at this point. I think we've run our course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, James Benson. Yeah. Jace, Jason Newstead was the fucking man. I was just watching Woodstock 99 again. You hated yeah. him, Jake? I was not I was never really sold on Jason Newstead. I liked him better than Rob Trujillo, but I mean, Rob seems cool, but Cliff Burton forever, bro. Mm. You know, I, yeah. I would, if I could, I, I'd turn that bus over myself. <laughs> CPR his ass back to Damn. life. Damn. You would have that mom strength? I would. I would have that mom strength. I was just watching Woodstock 99 where um, where Jason Newstead just fucking crushing it. Like, their, uh, their version of Creeping Death during Woodstock 99. Yeah. It's one of my favorite live performances. And actually, I found out that uh, Metallica, they're going to be in Pittsburgh, I think, August 14th. That's six so hours away. I know, but it's the closest they're going to be, and I would love to see them. That would be cool. They're, they have to be going through New York. They're not... I th- they're going to be in Boston at Boston Calling, I think. the Boston, That would be a cooler one to see than Pittsburgh, dude. Yeah. But I don't know. The Pittsburgh one is at PNC Park, which I've always wanted to see. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that would be fun. Was Twiggy bass or was Twiggy? Yeah, Twiggy Ramirez. He was bass? Was bass, yeah. I Actually, oh, dude. Uh, Anybody else think I should cut my ponytail? You should. You should get a fade and gel your bangs. No, I got two receipts. I got some fucking parking spots up here. I'm pulling, I'm pulling a double come over. No, you look good, buddy. Uh, spiral uh, bringing up Jocko in the in the chat. That's pretty. You guys. Did you guys know Twiggy Ramirez from Manson used yeah. to have a podcast? He used to have a podcast uh, with uh, the guy who's the current base Deftones bassist, Fred. Um, Armisen. <laughs> it begins with an S. Simonson. Schaefer. Like. Shinelin maybe or yeah. something like that. But they used to have a podcast together. Well, that's cool. Um Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty neat. I think Twiggy was a bad boy though, so any other podcasts that you heard <laughs> before? John, you have a recommendation for a haircut. Uh Lucas says to get the the boozy fade. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> a little boozy. He just got like a three on top. Bottle on the side? Yeah. Maybe one on the side? Well, I think his shit's uh, going as well. I mean, yeah, he's still no, rocking. I'm, I, I will get a haircut, but it will still go behind my ears. Aww. Fuck the haters. Fuck you, Katie, unless you're hot. Oh. Get up in my DMs, then we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Uh, bring back the cornrows. Cornrows would be fucking baller, dude. dude cornrows yeah. for a month and then just if dread them out. If pull it off, you could. Bust them out for June 19th. Now, I know if I fucking get cornrows again, another one of my neighbors is going to die and I'm going to have to take him out to go to his funeral. <laughs> <laughs> just wear a wig. <laughs> Yeah. We'll get you an Afro wig. 
What's that? Fucking, Fred Sablin. Yeah. Uh, what's that guy's uh, the fucking Raiders owner? Oh, that Mark Davis. Yeah, we'll get you oh, one of those. Dude, man. that man is. I don't know what he is. Dude, he's the most fucked up looking man right now. You gonna pull wait, him wait, up? wait. The Raiders owner, he look like a burn victim with the yeah. high bangs. He <laughs> yeah. looks like he works at a fucking coffee shop bangs. Yeah. Dude, he looks like a child that got gypsied. That's the Raiders <laughs> owner, the yeah. sole owner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What the fuck is wrong? Did he spend every dime he's ever had on the fucking sports team? No, his dad <laughs> owned it. Really? Yeah, so he and inherited it. His dad it. was the man. Like, he was, like, actually cool. He looks like Dennis the Menace. Like, Dude, just... that is one of the most fucked up looking dudes <laughs> possible. It's like, he doesn't have a bad face. Jake. He does have a bad face. It's, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he looks yeah, like he the does. one fucking guy in, I'm in to Hannibal the Lecter. Guy. I'm trying to help the guy. Yeah, I mean, give him a nice little comb over. He or looks like the dude who Hannibal ripped his face off. <laughs> uh, Legit. It's not even yeah. a fucking joke. Yeah, he's the most fucked up individual wait, wait. going right now. He's got the hair down the middle part. Is no, that that's him? John Gruden. I yeah, think. I thought that was a good boy. A good boy. <laughs> John, I just caught one of your hairs, dude. What? I just caught one of your hairs. A From second. my burp. I, I guess it's just fucking Do I have a lot it. of flyaways yes. going on? I told you I just washed it yesterday Oh damn <laughs> oh, You do got nice hair Furman, do you ever grow your hair out? No You no. played in bands all your life and you never had long hair? Yeah, I I, I tried for one minute and uh, You no, didn't get past the awkward phase? No, I didn't Yeah, I didn't make it's it It's tough Yeah, I just, Easier now as an adult I looked like a, a Division 2 all-star softball player And I just gave up <laughs> I had to cut it Danny, you have the perfect look for a, a music guy Yeah I can't ever People expect me to have Like real cool taste in music Yeah <laughs> Have I done No Cause you talk You're like yeah I've been to Kid Rock A bunch of times Like that's your concert <laughs> And it's like Yeah I do love Kid Rock Dude it looks you like went You went to would... Turnstile For two shows right Yeah Yeah that's yeah. a good Yeah that's good yeah. taste Yeah They sound hip But I'll you listen could... to that I'll go to any concert I don't have to like the band You seem like you would play Guitar or drums With your shirt off That's Ooh yeah Yeah that's the vibe yeah. You give yeah. off I was in a hardcore band for a little bit. Were you? Yeah, I was a vocalist that never wore a shirt. Nice. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah. Were you tatted up already? I was starting to. Like, yeah. I had already started a chest and had my neck done. So nice. I was, was also in a band and I never wore my shirt. Huh. I stand by the French Revolution ponytail. I don't care what <laughs> Katie says. I'm not getting a bowl cut. Ian Rader. Trev is the best. I would like to hear more about this, Ian. Go on, my friend. He says Mark Davis is a little stinker himself. Well, is he the Raiders guy? Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, he looks like he's up to some fucking <laughs> little rascals type shit. Yeah. That guy is... Uh, why did he trend yesterday? What did he do? Dude, he looks like a poor person oh, Trump. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what he looks like. Well, the Redskins owner is a certified little stinker, right? Dan... Uh, yeah, I think... Um, I think they're they're... They're, they filed some kind of like court injunction to have the Redskins email they released. Voted, yeah, I'm they, sorry, the Commanders. Their <laughs> emails released, and I think there's going to be a lot of fucked up shit. In Dan Snyder, right? That's the guy. Yeah, yeah. They they were like trying to vote him out recently. That's the the latest. Yeah, they're a fucked up organization, man. Just never fucking good. You guys, ever I ever tell you I met Roger Goodell and, and Colin Kaepernick the same day? Oh no, how'd you do that? Yeah. Uh, Where were you kneeling? <laughs> There's a spot on the turnpike. I got a couple of spot uh, cut out. Um, it was a, a work related thing, and uh, yeah, it was um, it was the uh, I don't want to divulge, but you don't work um, there anymore. No, yeah, I know. Uh, it was a hearing about uh, him being blackballed from the NFL. So it was post controversy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This was uh, this was like the hearing to essentially reinstate him and and discuss like foul play on part of the nfl to what keep you, him the out fucking of the league. stenographer in the courtroom what were you <laughs> what did you have to do with this buddy i was just i was there i was just i just happened to be there what yeah Furman. yeah and I've, I've also met mark cuban uh he wasn't there the same day uh, what his ass slew of other for? ruth bader ginsburg um fucking dumb bitch <laughs> <laughs> now nah, she fucked it up dude Abortion is yeah. going to become a fucking illegal because that bitch couldn't fucking bow out during Obama's administration. <laughs> Don't get me started on that bitch RBG, dude. You know what the G stands for? Bitch too. <laughs> Ruth bitch bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you 
<laughs> nah, everybody knows she fucked up big time. Jake, I gotta find out how you were in these court proceedings. Oh man, what happened? You don't. I was a you're not a part of that. Oh uh, no, I. <laughs> were you I like taking the trash out and heard this yeah, shit? Yeah, <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck did you get access uh, to this, buddy? I listen. The person was a very. Uh, they were an NFL arbiter. And they were proceeding. They were uh, over. Like they were hearing the case, and they were the ones making the decision. So it happened, and then a few weeks later, the decision came. So it was like a one-day event. Everything was recorded. Everything was taken uh, into account, and then they went away, made their decision, came back a few weeks later. So you cannot reveal how you were in there or why you were in there. No. All right. You sound an NDA. But I was dressed up in a Forty (laughs) ers So, yeah. damn, Furman, that's wild, man. Yeah. Did Roger Goodell do the black handshake with you? Because nobody's better. Dude, you know what's funny is I, I took me like a minute to realize who it was. I was like, he looks so fucking familiar. Like, do I know him? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I do. It's Roger Goodell. Mm. Because I was so focused on Kaepernick. I was just like, oh wow, Kaepernick. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, you know. Did he have corn roast or court? No. Court roast. Afro. <laughs> court <Yeah>. roast. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you just got called Deep State Furman. <laughs> <laughs> RBG was on my fantasy Supreme Court team. <laughs> yeah. His uh, RBG used to, er, yeah, RBG, but RG3 <laughs> used to be married to a lady whose name made me laugh every time I heard it. His ex-wife's name was Rebecca Liddycoat. <laughs> Say it again? <laughs> Rebecca Liddycoat. <laughs> is that uh, one last name? Liddy Coat is... Yes. Liddy Coat. Mm-hmm. It's pretty funny. Rebecca Liddy Goat to Titty Goat. <laughs> <laughs> Becky with the good Liddy Coat. <laughs> Big old Rangers. <laughs> yeah, did anybody figure out what the fuck Furman's been talking about with the Rangers this whole time? Jake, have you ever seen a tit? <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, I have. I told you before this thing started, you know... You sent me down a wild ride. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, I got. Uh, I sent something to these guys. Got them all riled up. What was it? <laughs> Chubby going wild? Uh, that's not okay. Uh, all right, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, I was in a subreddit <laughs> called Chubby Going Wild, and normally, oh. it's what I want to see. It's just all <laughs> lovely, lovely ladies who are yeah, a bit yeah. thick who are just bearing it all. But somehow, this fucking sixty-five-year-old spunker snuck herself in there. She's like, I'm a 65 year old grandmom, and she's on the bed with a mask on, titties out. That's not what sent me crazy. It was just the, the topic. Yeah. I was like, all right, let's see what this is all about. You can get lost in Chubby Going Wild. Yeah. <laughs> Your BBW fans need an apology for being referred to as medicine balls <laughs> before the shit wraps. Yeah, You're for real. You're absolutely right, Alexandria. Alexandria, yes. You're 100 percent right. You've you know, you guys probably have some nice ragers, and he's here. Oh, just I apologize. Being... Um, so yeah, I love a fucking oompa loompa and a fucking. <laughs> John is not a representative of this group. <laughs> nah, I love not fucking knowing which end is up, dude. That's dude. The fucking my favorite. <laughs> no, scene. fuck that. John's on his own. <laughs> yeah. I think Danny, how do you feel about bigger ladies? Oh, what job? <laughs> oh. All right. Well, here's the House deal. Divided. Jake and I. Dude. Love women that are so big They need a plan to get out of a couch Dude I want to get knocked out by those ragers You know what I mean Furman I I still have no idea what that means man (laughs) I do not Have a clue what a raging set of tits could be How long have you been called up ragers (laughs) You know what It was just tonight I just busted it out tonight I was Uh, confident Yeah you just ripped that one off the dome bro (laughs) Hey hey, this is like your your wizard sleeve incident That we had a talk outside the comedy Uh club about That's what the Redskins should have named themselves The ragers (laughs) Just two fat tits Bouncing around the stadium Essentially what I want from a woman's breasts Is (laughs) Please don't clip the stick. Tell me. <laughs> Tell me what no, you want from I a can't. woman's breast. Come on. No. Forget it. Forget it's the whole thing. I have the page around. It's okay. Uh, all right. It's like a... to say like a human brain in a pillowcase. Like a large brain in a pillowcase. Probably like several brains in each pillowcase. Dan, I don't think he's ever seen a tit. <laughs> Dude, I've no. seen... Come on, guys. You want a lumpy tit? No, not a lumpy tit. He said several braids at a point. Well, listen. Like a nice bag of sand. (laughs) 
It's a this is exactly that fucking scene. <laughs> no, dude. it's not, dude. I'm just. I, I listen. I don't really describe breasts often because we, I'm too busy. Never mind. We gotta have a show and tell. You remember the movie Mask where fucking uh, Rocky Dennis was showing his girlfriend I wish what I was colors Rocky are Dennis right now because she couldn't see them because she was blind. Like we need to have Jake blindfolded dude. and show him what tits are. Man, is this a tit? Dude, guys, this is the worst. Can we just stop this, please? I don't want no not lumpy and veiny. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Alexandria. Th- exactly that. Like them. Tumor tit. Them Halloween titties. Let's take them. Oh, man, God. Dude, Rager's Furman. Oh, yeah. Christina yes. Hendricks does Thank have you, Rager's. Thank you, Katie. Right. Yeah. She has yeah. Rager's. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Dude, I've she, been saying that for years. That lady's got titties like kittens that can't stay in the box. Listen, Dunbar, the brains thing, I was just trying to put it in a way that's soft. You know. You should like do a, phone sex, dude. <laughs> dude, I would be Have you the ever worst. thought about that? Have you I felt a brain? <laughs> no, I haven't. But I assume there's after you get all that squishy privilege. That's what I want. I want squishy the... boobs. Big old squishy boobs. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Can we cut the recording? You're the one that won't shut the fuck up about tits. Yo, Jake. If you can get the okay for this, oh. I would pay for it. But if I take you to the bunny ranch. Oh, my God, no. I would love to have you describe this to a lady and see if she can accommodate you. If she has any fucking clue what you're talking about. (laughs) We should just call the bunny ranch, describe, have him describe what he's looking for. Excellent point. Yes. Dude, I actually think that's how you set up an arrangement is I think you email them and start negotiations before you get there. No fucking way. John, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Dude, I would have fucking... How long is the drive there? I would have pulled over into... Multiple gas stations and beat it, beat the fuck out of my deck just describing this woman. <clears throat> you got anything? Is, dude, I'm like, as soon as I get to the Sunoco, I'm like, well, I have to get rid of this rager. <laughs> I gotta get rid of this pair of fucking squishy tits in my pants. <laughs> How else am I gonna do it except go to this desert glory hole in the renowned Sunoco gas station off of I 5. Okay. I-15. The intersection of I-5 and I-15. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the Bunny Ranch? Nevada? Obviously, I right? think it's Pahrump, Nevada. <gasps> I've been through Pahrump, dude. I'm pretty sure it's Pahrump. Oh, we gotta listen to that fucking Clown Motel. Uh, oh, I'd love to go there. Yeah. What was the name of that place again? Um, to... oh, so hung up on Rages Chat. right now. Tonopa, Nevada. Yeah, if you guys know the name of this place, but it's a very creepy clown hotel that's right next to this. It's the world-famous clown hotel. That's what it's called? Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's right next to this creepy-ass graveyard that I would love to visit there. Yeah, that would be an incredibly inconvenient and expensive trip. (laughs) Let's do it, baby. (laughs) Sounds like we're going to do it. Danny, can you type Ragers into (laughs) Google? (laughs) Tonopa? Tonopa, Nevada, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's right on the north side of Area 51. Super creepy. Oh, that's the clowns, not the hookers, right? Ross, yes. They need to be big, fat naturals. Mm. No performance enhanced. That's, yes. Thank you. They need to remake my big, fat Greek wedding. My big, fat natural wedding. You don't know what I'm talking about? You gotta know what I'm talking about. You still talking about tits? Yeah, I fucking know what you're talking about. Tits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You got to see him sometime. <laughs> What's that? Two hours? Okay. We should be, we should be landing this bird, right? <laughs> Do we still have 60 people in here? Uh, 56. Oh, my Damn. God. Who had hot dogs today? <laughs> <laughs> I had two, baby. Let's see some fucking some stinky doggies in the chat if you had some hot Damn, dogs Damn, I had today. a hot dog today, too. Oh, my yeah, God. For yeah, for me, too. Am I going to make it to hot dog land before they close? I got one in the fridge if you want one. Is it already cooked? Mm-hmm. Jesus I'm all Christ. set. I, got, I need my hunger fresh right. today, brother. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I had a Wawa hunker the other day. It really hit the spot. They Two made bucks. hot dogs? Dude, I love they their got hot dogs. Them in Oh, the, that's in right. The, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, hot, the hot Red Bull fridge. 
<laughs> oh my god three beers and two hours of being a retard and i can't describe a fucking <laughs> heater now are you, you know a fan of uh the big bacon cheese dog i will fuck with it every once in a while but i t- on that day i just wanted a regular buddy there's your pounder. there's your move right there sonic jumbo chili dog you know all the sonics Ooh, around here close. no it opened back up apparently it opened what? back up somebody said they opened back up i don't know we would have to see that for ourselves that seems like the kind of if thing. If only that shuts we lived a mile away. I know the <laughs> I know the Lancaster one reopened. What? I saw those motherfuckers taking signage down a year ago. Same. Not that that one at ours, but yeah. they yeah, they put it well, all fingers back. Fingers crossed that the Aramingo one opens back up. Mm. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. That one was always no, bad. That's already already been turned into a chaz by the local heroin addicts. <laughs> <laughs> Big sloppy floppers. Oh, I that. Like that is a tit that I can picture. That, yeah. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's a rager to you? Yes. God damn. Dude, because yeah. fucking... they clap. And adjectives. The, 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 the They clap. They push them together. Where's the rage in all that? Oh, it's a beautiful rage. It's a dance. <laughs> it's like a haka. It's a titty yeah. haka. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's a, it's a knocka. <laughs> it's a knocka. Yeah, that's what we should. Yeah, we should. Um, we should put together a rugby team, and they think we're about to do the haka, but we're actually going to do the cha-cha slide. <laughs> <laughs> Ragers, Australian Dude. for big sloppy floppers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all ready to wrap it up for the evening? Yes, God, yes, Cruella, guys, let's I go. Cannot thank you guys enough for coming here tonight and be with us for our very first live. Uh, fucking little Snickers episode. I almost yeah, forgot the name of the podcast. I really love doing this live. It makes that last unnecessary 15 to 35 minutes a lot more fun with <laughs> yeah. other people in the chat. <laughs> yeah, you guys really made this fun. Chick, there you go. Milk bags. You got yeah. all these floppy dog milkers, ears. I love Big sloppy floppers. Man. Milkers. That's funny. God, what a way to end. Heavy saggies. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Special shout out to anybody that made me feel uh, lesser than for my haircut. That was really. Well, that's what you get for fun. making fun of bigger girls. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I put All right. Karma out there. He takes it back and he's sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll be back. Um, yeah, we'll release a, a regular episode next week. And uh, you guys cool if we do this once a month? A live episode? Whatever the yeah. fuck you want, bro. All right. I would love to do I'll more of these. I'll follow you into the, any graveyard in the world. Uh, get ready to piss, baby. <laughs> uh, mini stinkers coming up. Though. Oh, yeah. We got a really fun mini sneakers coming out this week. Oh, uh, yeah. John and I recorded it last week because Furman was knee deep in some pussy in Rhode Island. Is Mini Snickers going to be by default no murder? No, not necessarily. Okay. My idea for Mini Stinkers was just a single incident right, that right, makes right. a person a stinker. Whereas, like someone like tonight, like Jane Toppin, like her whole life was a series she of fucking up, yeah, funny right fucked up it. shit. So, no rules, just right, baby. This is Outback Steakhouse <laughs> of podcasting. Oh, you're making me hungry. Oh my god. For a blooming onion. Oh, I miss great rages. I usually say great teats, but uh, you called hot dogs a a wiener shaped item of honkers, so it's yeah. like you're using it interchangeably too. Well, you know, you know, if I'm honking on Bobo, it means I'm sucking Aerosmith's dick, right? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. All right, I love you guys. We'll see you next time. You're awesome. <laughs> Y'all remember honking on Bobo, right? <laughs>